All-Star Game season is to the NFL Draft with the 99th Annual East-West Shrine Bowl kicking off live on NFL Network. They say everything is bigger in Texas, but you don't need to be the biggest to take advantage of your opportunities. Take me, for example, 5'9", 185. I was a late invite to the Shrine Bowl, but when I got here, I was ready. Jonathan Beasley of Kansas State back throwing end zone. Caught, and a touchdown. Steve Smith. I know exactly what this game can do for you. Because of what I did in this game and in my 16-year NFL career. Steve Smith, that man can't be stopped. You can't stop him. I'm serious. I am now a Shrine Bowl Hall of Famer. For the first time ever. The East-West Shrine Bowl is at the Star in Frisco. What future pro bowlers, playoff heroes, and Hall of Famers will take the field tonight? It's just one game, but it can mean everything. Trust me, this is the 99th East-West Shrine Bowl. Night always brings out the stars in Dallas in the sky and on the helmets of America's team with Cowboys HQ on this night hosting NFL draft hopefuls looking to make their stars shine from Power Five Conference brand names to those just looking to make a name for themselves. They have that opportunity and we get a front row seat to the action as we welcome you inside the Ford Center broadcast booth at the Star for the 99th East-West Shrine Bowl here on NFL Network. Hello everybody, Rhett Lewis here with former NFL scout Bucky Brooks. Jane Slater will join us live on the sideline here in just a moment. And let's start with the fact that the draft process, Bucky Brooks, can feel like a marathon. Marquee events all over the place, Combine, Pro Day. What does tonight's Shrine Bowl offer these players? It's a chance to make a lasting impression, just like Steve Smith talked about. It is everything to these players. It's the last chance to dazzle in front of scouts. You have an opportunity to go against the best of the best, and how you perform has an opportunity to really impact the way that scouts view you and talk about you in meeting rooms. So this is a huge opportunity for the players to really put on. Experience has been the name of the game for quarterbacks recently as we look at Shrine Bowl alums like Brock Purdy, Dorian Thompson Robinson, Aiden O'Connell, and Tommy DeVito, who all started games in their rookie NFL seasons. And the six quarterbacks taking the field tonight just as experienced as the ones that have come before them playing in at least 40 games, Bucky. Yeah, so when you think about experience, it can lead to expertise. And we're seeing the young quarterbacks that are playing well in the National Football League had a lot of experience at a collegiate level. Devin Leary is a guy who certainly had a lot of experience, first at NC State, then at Kentucky, had a remarkable year uh, back in 2021. 35 touchdowns, only five interceptions, threw for over 3,400 yards. He is talented, big-time arm talent. The coaches raved about his ability. And then on the other side is Talia Tagovailoa, the younger brother of two attack about lower but look he made his own name at maryland three-year starter under mike loxley leads as the all-time pass leader in big 10 history with over 11,000 yards and rpo savant this is one of the best quick rhythm passes that you're going to see 11 maryland program passing records to talia tungabailoa's name as well but it's not just an opportunity for these players tonight as we've seen in recent years with college all-star games the coaches are made up of a mashup of nfl staffs but playing an ultra in in elevated roles and for more of the coaches in this game we head down to the sideline and check in with jane slater Brett Bucky, what a perfect setup as we start with West coach Mike Kafka, Giants offensive coordinator who was also a quarterback in the 2010 East-West Shrine Bowl. He earned MVP honors and, you know, he's best known in the league for his work with Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes, a league MVP of his own under Kafka, he would go on to win the Super Bowl the following year. For the East, Bears special teams coordinator Richard Hightower. In his 16th year in the league, add him to the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree. Teammates at Texas, Hightower was a walk-on who earned a scholarship with Shanahan under then-coach Matt Brown. That friendship continued to Houston, where Hightower started as a marketing intern for the Texans, doing whatever it took to get into coaching. Shanahan, the QB coach at the time, gave Hightower his first coaching internship. Speaking of Hightower, let's check in with him in the locker room pregame. We talked about this in the meeting room, right? It's an opportunity of a lifetime. 
Remember your why and the person you're playing for. Every play you play today, you're playing for that person that helped get you to this moment. Y'all with me on that? Yes, sir. All right. You guys had a great week of practice. You stacked days. Now it's time to cut it loose. All right. Remember what it is to win ball games. Coaches and players are ready for kickoff, and so are we. Back with it here from the Ford Center at the Star when we return here on NFL Network. Pro Football Hall of Famer Emmett Smith prominently featured at the Star here in Frisco. And in fact, 78 Pro Football Hall of Famers have begun their NFL journey here at the East West Shrine Bowl as we get just set for kickoff. Here's what the rules will look like tonight. Three base offensive personnel groupings, 21 personnel features, two running backs, and a tight end. As we get to 12 personnel, we lose a tight end, and we, we lose a running back, we add a tight end. 11 personnel will welcome the third wide receiver to the field. On defense, two base coverages. Cover two, you'll see those two high safeties manning the deep halves of the field. Cover three, one middle safety, and those two corners join in the deep coverage. Sorry, Week Martindale, no zero blitz. Tonight, in fact, no blitzing of any kind. Any pass rush must come from someone on the line of scrimmage. Arkansas's Cam Little with a big old leg has the ball teed up, and he is ready to kick off. 58 touchbacks on 68 kickoffs in his Razorback career, but he only gets a three-step approach as these. this is one of just two kickoffs we'll have in the game. They want to make sure, Bucky, that we get a return, and we'll have Beanie Bishop returning for the East team. Yeah, this should be exciting. You're talking about putting the ball in play, setting the tone. You only have one opportunity to really return the kick. This is a great chance for these guys to show to evaluators that they can play in the critical phase of the game, the kicking game. The more you can do, Beanie Bishop getting set for his 32nd career return. We have foot to ball, and we are underway in the 99th annual East-West Shrine Bowl here. Beanie, two yards deep in the end zone. He's got it. Terrific tackle out there made by Quantez Stiggers on kickoff. How about a that? very unique story, Bucky Brooks, coming from the CFL's Toronto Argonauts. We'll get more on that for Jane Slater here in just a bit. Very unique position as we welcome Jake Plummer getting the start for the East squad and head coach Richard Hightower, offensive coordinator Drew Terrell. Plummer, well-traveled, started his career at Purdue under the head coaching of Jeff Brom, moved off to Cal in 2022, and then was back with Brown in 2023. So we've got his teammate, Isaac Garendo, in the backfield from Louisville. And it's Garendo oh, yeah. that's going to kick the first big carry, game. but we got a big-time hit from Darius Muasau, captain of the West Squad, and making his presence felt. Look, made his presence felt. They talked about him all week. Just being a natural linebacker, great instinct, shoots the hole, makes a big hit right away. Way to set the tone for the defense. Oh, yeah. Talk about a tone-setting volume type of hit right there from Muasau, who his defensive coordinator, Tem Labaku, says he's everything you want in an off-the-ball backer. So after the one-yard loss, Jake Plummer, or Jack Plummer, rather, on second down. Looking for Casey Washington. Stiggers there in coverage. All right, Bucky, let's take a look at the impact players on the East team offense and West defense. Yeah, look, you got to like this. Isaiah Williams and Dylan. Holker had great weeks this week. Both great pass catchers can get it done in a variety of ways. And then look, DTD and Anderson being able to make plays. Anderson in particular, a guy who had a bunch of sacks during his time. One of four HBCU players down at Gramble in this game. Palmer getting some early pressure, showing some of that good footwork, trying to get out and away from danger. Pressure being brought by well, Tar Heel in the yeah. game, Miles Murphy. Miles Murphy, look, outstanding week. The, the coaches just talked about the wow effect that he had. Very talented, great motor, understood what he was doing, and you can see right away made an impact. Matthew Hayball, interesting journey to this game. Of course, is in Australian, and after, when he was 18 years old, played three years of Aussie football before coming to the States and joining Florida Atlantic, then transferring to Vanderbilt, where he's one of the best punters in the country. The lefty, low punt, gonna be fielded. 
And it's Beanie Bishop back there who's got an opportunity, and he's going to bring that ball out to about the 43-yard line. We we'll get a chance to see the West team offense for the first time, which is coordinated by Davis Webb, young in the coaching profession, getting a nice opportunity here, and he's going to have Keaton Slovis, Bucky, take the first snaps. Another well-traveled quarterback, freshman phenom at USC, 2019 to 21, went to Pitt in 22, and then finished his career starting the first eight games of this season for BYU. And here comes. Slovis going to get that ball, check it down to his running back. And you want to talk about name brands, how about Frank Gore Jr. on the reception out of the backfield? How about that first play goes to Frank Gore Jr.? Obviously, his dad, a legendary player, over 16,000 yards in the league, 16-year career. Frank Gore Jr., when you look at him, I mean, he, he, he walks like him, he talks like him. Man, not bad when it comes to bloodlines. Yeah, they said his, even his inside zone oh footwork getting very technical, actually exactly identical to what Frank Gore Sr. did in his 16,000 rushing yardage career over a decade plus in the league. And there, Frank Gore Jr. gets the carry on second down and is one of our impact players here, Buck. Yeah, his first two touches. And so he's one of the impact players that you want to watch. But also on the outside, Taj Washington from SC, fantastic route runner, had a great week of practice. But on the other side, Muhammad Kamara, Josh Wallace, Kamar was a big time player, Mountain West defensive player of the year. But the nation sacks, in fact, so one to watch here as Keaton Slovis gets set for his first third down opportunity of the game. Flag comes out. Away. And Slovis has our first completion of the game. Looks like he's going to get that out to Taj Washington out of USC over there on the sideline. But we're going to wait and see neutral zone infraction. What the call is. So that was going to be short of the first down, so this will actually be... Offside. Defense number 58. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. All right. So as Mark Klosinski from the Big Ten gives us the call, it's going to make this a much more manageable third down here. Third and very short. Surprised they didn't actually give him the first down here, Bucks. I think they're going to. Looks like first down here. Okay, move the ball back a little bit. There you go. Third and short. A little short yardage opportunity here for Keaton Slovis' offensive unit. And off's going to go to Frank Gore Jr. Oh. He's got some running room. Frank Gore Jr. busts out the left side, and they're not going to get him. Frank Gore Jr. has our first touchdown of the ball game, and first in two years, in fact. Look, look, this is exactly what we've been hoping for. Want to see some offensive fireworks? Frank Gore Jr. doing exactly what the coach has talked about. They talked about his footwork mimicking his dad. Here we see it on the inside zone. Immediately gets to the cutback. Downhill gets it to the secondary. And then Frank Gore Jr. finishes just like his dad puts the ball in the paint. Josh Cephas doing a nice job downfield blocking from his wide receiver spot, helping clear a path. You know, they said that Frank Gore Jr. might only be good for that six, seven yard yeah. burst, but he showed he's got the wheels to get it the distance. He showed he did. He was able to take it the distance. Love that. No extra points in today's game. Got to go for two. And Jack Plummer, or rather Keaton Slovis, is going to hand that off once again to Frank Gore Jr. And the East Team defense stands tall there. And when we come back, we'll get another look at that East team offense as they try to answer Frank Gore's fireworks. All right, back here with you at the East-West Shrine Bowl where Frank Gore Jr. off a 49-yard touchdown run gave us our first score of the game and something his dad did plenty of times in his NFL and collegiate careers, which you're looking at here. Frank Gore Sr. over there on the left. Very similar, Bucky, in terms of frame. Frank Gore Jr. a little bit smaller, but a bit more productive in the touchdown category. Yeah, look, you talk about... Uh just being able to be a spitting image of his dad in terms of the footwork, the flash, being able to finish that great run by Jr. He actually had a 75-yard rushing touchdown versus Daniel Jeremiah's Appalachian State Mountaineers this year. So used to the big play is Frank Gore Jr. He's on the sideline now, and the East team offense has their first completion of the day, and it's 
Jack Plummer finding the Colorado State tight end, Dallin Holker, who you identified as an impact player here, Buck. Look, he's a big time player, great route runner, does a, a fantastic job of being able to create separation. We saw it all week in practice. One of the best pass catchers that we saw at the game. And among the most productive tight ends in all of college football this year with those 64 receptions and 767 yards. First carry of the game for Tyro Tracy out of Purdue, who has a first down for the East squad on that run off the left side. Yeah, unique background. A guy that was a wide receiver at Iowa made his way to Purdue, moved to running back. When he talked to the coaches, they said he needed to work on his contact balance. We saw him work on some of that pull through an arm tackle at first to be able to pick up that first down. Certainly one to watch in the past game with that receiver background. Didn't make the full-time switch to running back until this season. We got Holker in the backfield with Tracy behind Jack Plummer. And the offense here. And Plummer's going to hand again to Tyrone Tracy. Bust through on that right side and it's going to be about three, four yards on that first down run. Trying to set up this offense, keep them on schedule, and try to keep this unit on the field. Yeah, I want to keep the unit on, on the field. Trace has a unique background. Obviously, the wide receiver to running back conversion is some of the things that we're beginning to see in the National Football League. When you look at the San Francisco 49ers and how Debo Sam was able to go from outside to inside the backfield, the more you can do certainly enhances his opportunities of being able to play at the next level. Second and six here for Plummer. Gonna keep it on the ground, but Tyrone oh, man, Tracy yeah. again has some room off the right side, and he's gonna get the first down and brought down with some authority by Lavelle Bailey and Dwight McGluther, not of the secondary. Rather, that was Dadrian Taylor Demerson from Texas Tech coming in there as well. We got a flag on the play. And let's see what our referee Mark Klazinski has for us here. Offense number 74, 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. All right, so that's Caden Wallace manning that right guard spot. Uh, another one of those really experienced players uh, in this game. Started 40 games for the Nittany Lions. Yeah, unfortunate penalty. That was a good run by Tracy getting to the second level. Showing some burst. Love the physicality that he's displaying. Normally, when you have guys that make that conversion from wide receiver to running back, you worry about their physicality and toughness when it comes to finishing. Really good job. Next time, you just want to get it right. Oh. No shortage of first, though, for yeah, Tracy. Yeah. Holding penalty will set him back and make it a second and eight. Now from the 41. Plumber from the gun, where he's quite comfortable. Oh, going down the middle of the field for Holker. Ball just off his fingertips with Mark Perry out of TCU in coverage there, Buck. Nearly a big one down the hash. Yeah, nearly a big one down the hash. He had a four vertical concept. Uh, Holker is, is screaming down the hash. Try to look him off and try to fit it in just a little high, a little long. Next time, you hope he's able to fit that one into a tight window. So Holker, kind of an interesting story uh, as well. Not a lot of production in the beginning of his career, which was spent at BYU, transferred into Colorado State this last year, and absolutely blew up, leading all tight ends at FBS with those 64 receptions. Here's Plummer again on third down. And he gets a pressure in his face, he's gonna go down. And it's Solomon Bird from USC with a sack, but we do have a flag on the play. Take a minute to see what that was, but it boy sure felt like Solomon Bird was shot out of a cannon off the offense's right side. Yeah, Solomon Bird did a great Illegal job. Illegal contact. Defense number 33. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Right, let's take a look at that pass rush for Bird here, Buck. Yeah, look, just straight speed rush. Just turns the corner, puts a long arm inside. Look, you could have called a holding penalty on the offensive tackle there. Great job by Bird finishing. One of the things that you want to see, we only have four guys that can rush, can't bliss. So this is a great opportunity for these uh, frontline defenders to show that they can pass for us one-on-one. -on -one. So the illegal contact on Mark Perry ends up nullifying the sack. He gives the East team a fresh set of downs, just four yards shy of midfield. Lummers, new running back in the game. And it's Jacob Cabote who showcases his burst, and he's got some fresh tires, too. Just 129 career carries for Cabote. 
He started his career back in 2017, Bucky. Look, you talk about fresh legs, being able to put it downhill. Look, straight downhill play. Ran behind his pass, finished with the violence that you love to see from the racing case. Three years at Texas A&M, 17 and 19. Went to Incarnate Word in 2020. They didn't play, so he then moved on and found a home at Louisiana, where he didn't earn a scholarship until this past September, and making sure to take advantage of his opportunities here at the Shrine. A little play action this time from Plummer, and he's gonna end up checking it down to Cabote. Takes one miss, but he's brought down by Miles Harden out of South Dakota. The play action Repeat pass. First down. Yep, so he had the holding call. It's going to nullify that gain from Cabote. But yeah, looking at the play action pass and Plummer kind of smartly checking it down. Yeah, checked it down. And when you have running backs that can catch the ball, man, it just gives you an opportunity to just gobble up these hidden yards. Good job by Cabote being able to get a first down, even though it was nullified by Plummer. So we've gone forward, back, forward, back, and now back again with Walter Rouse, guilty of the holding call this time. Out there at left tackle, six foot six, 323 pound, massive frame played this year at Oklahoma. So another first down. And another handoff. This time it is Cabote again, and Cabote, yeah, nice patience and vision there, Buck. Yeah, nice patience. Just trying to find a, a lane. Did a really good job of being patient, running behind his pads, waiting for his blocks to develop. Like the way he finished off there. Adrian Taylor Demerson on the tackle, calling Rabbit that nickname running like a wild man uh, on a football field back in second grade take a look at demerson yeah that's a great job filling the alley uh one of the more difficult things that you can do from safety is having to come downhill and make those tackles in the alley really good job by dtd making the tackle Boy, coaches absolutely loved his presence this week in practice one of the standouts has all the tools and quote unquote put it all on tape Oh, here's Plummer taking a shot deep down the right sideline, looking for the big X receiver out of the national champion Michigan Wolverines, Cornelius Johnson, but that ball just out of bounds. MJ Devonshire, Buck, providing the coverage. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one coverage right here. Had a little press coverage. Finally got his hands on him. He'll have to learn that he can't get, put his hands on the receiver down the field in the National Football League at that depth, but really good job pushing him to the sideline, really limited the window for the quarterback. Actually, already seen that come to fruition for Mark Perry, who was guilty of that illegal contact. May not have been called in college. Of course, you can have some contact beyond five yards as long as the ball is in the, in the air. Of course, not the case in the NFL and tonight at the Shrine Bowl. So here we go, just past midfield. Third and ten for Plummer. has got a complete to Dallin Holker, and he's got himself a first down as this East team, despite some adversity, marching down the field. Yeah, marching down the field. And this is Holker doing what he does really well. Gives the quarterback a big target over the middle of the field. Playing against a little Tampa, too. Checks it down to the tight end. The tight end does a great job of getting vertical. North-South immediately after the catch, he's able to move the chains. All right, Isaac Garendo has checked back into the ball game. As is Drake Stoops. One of those familiar names played at Oklahoma. And of course, the son of legendary Sooner head coach Bob Stoops. Here goes the handoff to Garendo, but that hole closes up quickly. Thanks to Lavelle Bailey out of Fresno State. Now look, NIL has taken on a <laughs> world of its own in college football, but this is what it's supposed to be, Bucky. Jack Plummer, Tom Drexler forming the best plumbers with two M's and also a B in the Ville. How about it? I mean, you got to like it, man. The opportunities that these guys have in terms of just being able to make a little side cash off name, image, and likeness. You have to love it. I like to play on work. That's what NIL was supposed to be, though. <laughs> we certainly see the dark side of it at times, but that's pretty cool there uh, in Louisville. Here comes Plummer. Again, moving off to his right, showing some nimbleness there in the pocket, but couldn't connect with Garenda. Yeah, couldn't connect. Slightly off target. And so now we got a big third down situation. As an evaluator, you love to see these opportunities. Cam Plummer step up, make a play, continue to extend this drive. Did so on that last set of downs. Completed to Dallin Holker for the first down. See what he can find here on this third down. There's your offensive coordinator for the E squad, Drew Terrell. Boy, he was fun, man. You know what? He really embraced this opportunity. He had fun with the players. He's got great command of this offense, too. Really good command. Really love meeting with him. Nice perspective on the game. 
perfectly good pocket. Going to go to the left side for Holker, who's going to make a tough catch on the sideline. Yes, give him the catch. And I defense on the spot might be a tad short of the first down, bringing up an intriguing fourth down opportunity for Richard Hightower, the head coach. So, so for Holker, these are the things that you liked about him when you watched this tape in Colorado State. Did a really good job of creating separation, A-type window, contested catches. Nice, nimble. They may have been. Yeah, uh, replay uh, might have had friendly. something to say about that. They might have that, been friendly but... when it came to allowing him to get his feet in, but he'll take the reception. As it stands now, third catch of the night for the productive Holker. And here comes Plummer. Going to try to hit the slants nice. out there to Tejon Palmer, who comes up with a strong catch down the middle of the field. Yeah, strong catch. Um, when you evaluate wide receivers, you want to say, can they make? Uh, these contested catches, guys draped on him, safety beating down. Love the courage, love the concentration. More importantly, I love that he was able to extend the drive for the first down. Big time. So we got a first down now. We are in the red zone, and we've got an opportunity for this East team to answer that Frank Gore 49 yard touchdown uh, for the West squad. And we'll see what Drew Terrell dials up here. Drops the snap, able to pick it up though, and he's gonna just throw it to the back of the end zone for Isaiah Williams. Just lucky to get that play off, and this was one of the things that Drew Terrell was worried about, Buck. He talked about it. He talked about it in meeting, worrying about the quarterback center exchange. Most of that was from the gun, but just under center, because remember, a lot of these quarterbacks don't have a lot of experience uh, doing the traditional under center snap. Sometimes you may have some faux pas. And Drew really uh, getting his work in here upcoming 15th play of this drive for the East squad as we sit with just over two minutes left in the first quarter here. Over the gun again. Oh, he's getting oh, rush in his face immediately. And this time he's going to go down, and this sack from Grayson Murphy is going to stand. Uh, when we talk to the coach, we talk about the Murphys, the twin coming off the present, just a sea ball, get ball defender. Talk about being able to kind of freelance a little bit because they just had great instincts and awareness. Here, he just runs past, uh, just runs past the right tackle. Great initial burst, great get off. Way to finish it off with a sack. Yes, Grayson Murphy, 21 and a half sacks in his career at UCLA. A half sack better than his brother Gabriel Murphy, also at UCLA. 21 sacks, and up with a little distance himself and brother Gabe and another sack here for this West defense as the East continues to move backwards it's Miles Murphy uh, who is absolutely has game wrecking potential here Buck. Yeah Miles Murphy one of the more talented prospects in this game we talked about the coaches kind of look, being very effusive with the praise they call 65 68 a wild player he might have got away with a face mask but uh, I'm going to excuse oh, yeah. that because of the helmet, uh, the Tar Heel thing. We can do no wrong, so oh, I am wow. okay Is with that. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going to excuse that. Interesting. <laughs> now we get Harrison Mevis certainly has the leg. More on that in a moment. Lined up here for a 46-yard field goal. And it's good. So Mevis puts the East team on the board after a roller coaster of a marathon drive and now makes the score. West 6, East 3, when we come back here to the Shrine. remaining in the first quarter here from the 99th East-West Shrine Bowl. Ford Center here at the start of Frisco, Texas. And the East had a promising drive going until Grayson Murphy ruined it, Buck. Yeah, Grayson Murphy, Gabriel Murphy, the Twins from UCLA. Uh, the coaches just talked about their instincts. They really just see it huh? as pass rushes already in the first quarter. We've seen them have an impact. No doubt, and forced a field goal opportunity from the East squad after a 17-play drive that took almost 11 minutes off the clock. Field goal was good by Mevis, and now we've got Keaton Slovis leading the West team offense. Running clock here in this ballgame, except when we get to the two-minute warning of each half. So, let's see if Slovis is able to even get this playoff. And he does, and it's a handoff. New running back in the game out of Tennessee, Jabari Small. Another flag down here. And usually see holding in these situations. Buck had a couple of them on this last drive as well. Yeah, we did. See what you see. Holding. Offense number 78. 10-yard penalty. 
need second down. All right, Doug Nestor. That's the end of the first quarter. The West Squad back 10 yards, and that'll do it for the first quarter of action here from the Shrine Bowl. That's a big time plays on offense with Frank Gore lighting up the scoreboard and on defense providing some pass rush and many more to come here from Frisco, Texas. Welcome back to the East-West Shrine Bowl, where the score is 6-3 West on top, thanks to a Frank Gore run on the first drive. It was a nice one, 49 yards. You having fun? I'm here with Mel Bauer, the Chief Marketing Officer for Shriners Bowl. Now that this thing is underway, how fun is this? It's a great night. There's so much excitement here. The crowd's fantastic. The players are obviously anxious to show off their incredible skills, and the, the Ford Center here at the Star is a perfect venue for us. How important is not only this game, but what this game does for children? This game allows us to tell our story on a national stage, to celebrate the great accomplishments of these all-stars while telling the story of our incredible patients. All right, and real quick, future of the game, where do you see this? You know, next year's our 100th Shrine Bowl, and so we can't wait to see exactly you know what that's going to look like but it, it just gets better every year so our 100th game next year promises to be the best ever all right let's get back to the action and see you guys up in the booth all right jane thanks so much appreciate that love the impact that shriners children's hospital has on these children on these patients and you know we get a, a chance to be, to be ambassadors of this game and of the great work that they do which we're very fortunate to do here on nfl network and as we get back down on the field talia tungavailoa a very familiar name entering the game at quarterback for the west squad yeah the coaches called him an rpo savant due to his quick rhythm passing skills the way he's able to execute those concepts you saw right away easy completion right out the gate Two starring a quarterback for the Dolphins and Leah oh. taking a deep shot and he's oh. got it complete and he's got it complete to Jaden Yonke from South Dakota State who got behind the defense and came up with the longest play of the day thus far. Yeah, big play. Uh, Leah taking my lower, getting outside of the pocket and dropping an absolute dime to Yonke, puts it on the money. Big play. Explosive plays are so hard to find. So we have a quarterback that can extend the play and continue to find completions. You love that as an evaluator. Cool, calm, and confidence is to Leah Tungavailo. Again, showcasing that experience that he gained during his time as a Maryland Terrapin, where he set 11 program records. And he'll take the snap here on first down for the 20th. Hand it off to Jabari Small, who gets loose and small, spinning for extra yards, going down just inside the 10. Great run. I mean, great run. Just hits it inside, finds a, a crease on the backside. Just comes outside of that GT counter. Finishes run through arm, arm tackles. Nice play. Nice play better squad. Got a nice block from 83. Isaac Rex, tight end out of BYU. And Small took advantage. And now set this West team offense up. First and goal. Lee on the move once again. And he's going to go back to his running back. Jafari Small just couldn't hang on. Yeah, could hang on. One of the things that I, I will make uh, note of with, with Leah, love the energy and the enthusiasm. He's been really excited for his teammates the last couple of plays in terms of them making plays. You love when a guy kind of changes the energy in the huddle. Leah has certainly given this team a little, little spark. Yeah, not just the most prolific Terrapin quarterback of all time, but one of those guys coaches call an energy Checking giver, out. and it's clear that he's provided a spark to this West team pass attack. Now in the opening minutes here in the second quarter. He's got a second and goal. Oh, how about oh, the RPO oh, right there? Man. And a flag down. Might get a little pass interference call here on Chigose Anusium. Let's see what Mark Klazinski comes up with. But we nearly had the RPO Savant go for a score. Pass interference. Defense number 12. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Ends up calling it on Omar Brown, but take us through the RPO, Buck. So one of the things that you look for when it comes to quarterback uh, in baseball, you talk about having middle infield hands. How quickly can you make the transition? You so Leah, put the ball in the belly, takes it out, delivers a slant. If not for the handsy uh, <laughs> coverage by she goes in, the the back, it would have been a touchdown. Indeed. So we got a first and goal now from the two. Play action. 
Liam with a finger in his face, gonna make him miss as he's done so many times in his career and taken himself for another West team touchdown. Yeah, a lot of energy. Liam being able to get outside the pocket, finishes it off with a nice nifty scramble for a touchdown, and then decides to uh, donate a little ball to the fans. <laughs> Uh, kind of love that. Love the energy that he's playing with. More importantly, I like the execution that he also has brought to the squad. 15 rushing touchdowns in his career at Maryland. So been there, done that. And uh, as we mentioned after the Frank Gore touchdown in the first quarter, no extra points. So all two-point conversions, only times we'll see the kicker uh, moving forward here is for field goals. And Frank Gore is back in the ballgame. Unsuccessful two-point conversion after that first score. And let's see what offensive coordinator Davis Webb can pull out of his bag for this one. Another quick little play action from Leah. He's on the move once again. Back in the end zone. Wide open. Josh Cephas from UTSA for two. Man. How about Leah being able to put it in the Love it. To Talia Tungavailoa showcasing the mobility both on the score and on the pocket movement to get free to find Cephas to make it an eight point possession. Leah and the West squad, including his teammates Keith the Slovis, loving the points up on the scoreboard. Welcoming a new class to the Shrine Bowl Hall of Fame, which this year features a 1997 Shrine Bowl star, Steve Sarkeesian there, getting it done for his BYU Cougs in this game. And it's our pleasure now to welcome you inside the broadcast booth here at the Port Center at the Star, Red Lewis Bucky Brooks, and now here with the head coach of the Big 12 champion, Texas Longhorns. Love seeing you get into the college football playoff this year. Give us a lot of drama down the stretch in that one. But coach, great honor for you here. What does it mean to you? What do you think back on when you see some of those flashbacks highlights? Man, I looked a lot, lot younger than I look right now. <laughs> well, recruiting an NIL yeah, will do that yeah, to you. But, coach. you know, uh, it, pretty cool. You know, when you think back to kind of my journey, um, I, I wasn't as fortunate to play, you know, a bunch of years in the NFL. But that time that I spent here and being around great players and great coaches and NFL coaches, I think, spurned a thought to, to get into coaching some. Devin Leary into the game at quarterback here from Kentucky and has that complete out to the tight end from Illinois, Tip Ryman. Didn't get a chance to showcase his skills a ton in the pass game in Illinois, but here he does a first down uh, for that E-Squad offense. Coach, what do you tell your players that come to play in all-star games like the Shrine Bowl here? Well, I mean, this is part of their resume, right? Um, when they come, how attentive are they in meetings, right? Being early to everything, the effort in which they practice with in practice, their ability to retain information from the meeting room and then bring it to practice and then ultimately apply it in the game, I think is all a part of their resume that they built upon uh, in their time playing in college. Here, Coach, and, and think about that, having players and them going on to play in all-star games, how important is that for you in recruiting? Because all these recruits want to go and play at the next level. Well, I think it's really big. You know, ultimately, all of our players that we recruit have dreams and aspirations of playing in the NFL. And, and the way we look at it is with team success comes the individual accolades and awards and opportunities, like, like playing in games like this. And so when you look at where we're at as a program, you know, year one when we came in, we didn't have one player drafted at the University of Texas. Last year we had five. This year we may have as many as 11 or 12. And so seeing the trajectory of the program in wins on the field, but also in players getting opportunities to play in the NFL. A couple of D tackles in particular we're going to yeah. be talking about in this year's draft. What are you most proud of about your guys that are heading into the draft and into the NFL this year? Just the development piece, you know, from where they were three years ago when we got there to where they are today. Uh, to see the growth not only as players on the field, but the maturity off the field the work that they do in the classroom uh, The work that they do in the community is something that we're definitely proud of and Speaking of growth, how about the size of Ryan Watts back there in the secondary? Yeah, really versatile guy, you know, Ryan's got great length. He really has great top-end speed um, and so the versatility, I think, that he might be able to provide at the NFL level, whether it's at corner, safety. He played corner for us, but I know uh, there's plenty of teams looking at him potentially as a safety. So that's always a positive, right? In the back end, a guy who can do multiple things. Yeah, his length, his athleticism, his ability to play a variety of techniques and styles is certainly going to give him an opportunity. Coach, it's just great to see Texas back on the map. How do you guys keep it going? 
Well, we got to keep recruiting, right? That, that, that's, a, that's a key component to what we do. It's our lifeline. Uh, ultimately, we got to continue to, to, to not get satisfied, right? We weren't good enough last year. It was great to win a conference championship. It was great to make the college football playoff. Obviously, at Texas, is the goal is, is to win championships. And uh, that's, that's, that's been our mission. That's been our focus for three years, and that hasn't changed. So we've got a hungry football team that got back to work last week. And uh, I can't wait to get back on the 40 acres with them next week and, and continue the mission. Coach, hang with us for a moment. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to see the West team offense take the field here from the Shrine Bowl in First Go Texas. Under 10 to go in the first half. West squad up 14-3, and Talia Tungavailoa from Maryland has provided us some fireworks as we go next level, presented by Zebra Red Lewis. Bucky Brooks now turning the mic over to Steve Sarkeesian, who coached Talia uh, back at Alabama a little bit. What do you see here, Coach? Well, the one thing Talia's always had is the ability to create on plays off schedule. He's got great athleticism. Uh, naturally, he, he is an exuberant young man. <laughs> what I was asking Bucky is, what's the fine? What's the fine in an All-Star game for throwing the ball in the stands? You know? Zero. That's why you can get yeah. away with it. Well, what's the fine? What's the fine on Sundays if you do something a like that? A little more oh, expensive. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a little pricey. Coach, the coach has talked about Talia being an RPO savant, and so quickly, just gotta explain to people about the hands that you have to have to be able to execute RPOs at a high level. Well, that's something we really started to evaluate more looking at the quarterback. You've got to have quick hands. And think about a shortstop, a second baseman, that ability to turn the double play when you're talking about RPO. But I think there is a there is a, a sense and a feel to it. You know, I had a chance to coach his older brother, Tua, yeah. and, and Talia, and, and having them both at the same time in the same year, they've got a knack for that thing. And, and they used to refer to it as the side eye. They never really <laughs> They looked at who they were supposed to look at, but they could side eye it and then have all the different arm angles to make the throw. You know, coach, every quarterback in this game, including Talia Tunga Bailoa, has played for more than one college program. Yep. And we talked about the transfer portal a little bit. Do you feel like in some ways it can really be valuable for guys to get exposed to different offensive schemes and philosophies? Well, I think it is. You know, a lot, there's your RPO yeah, right there, there by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it is. You know, I think a lot of times guys go to college um, and they get there and they, they may choose a school for a variety of reasons. And one of the last reasons sometimes they choose is, do they fit the scheme? Right. And then they get there and, and they're, they're in between positions mm -hmm. or uh, a, a, a staff is looking maybe for something a little bit different or there's not a necessarily a coaching change by the head coach, but maybe the coordinator leaves and there's a new coordinator. So that opportunity to, uh, to find an opportunity to play uh, in a system that might fit you a little bit more. And then and to your point, get that exposure right, and playing in different systems, different terminology. Coach, and thinking about this, in this game, every quarterback has 40 or more collegiate starts. So as a, a quarterback guru, what does that mean when your quarterback plays so much in college as it goes to the next level? Well, uh, you know, the, the numbers bear that out, right? When you look at quarterbacks going into the NFL with less than 25 career starts, the longevity isn't great. The success isn't great. So getting that over that 25 career starts, um, I think is helpful. It's experience. Um, it's it's making mistakes and then having, having the opportunity to overcome and continue to grow. It's a, the ability to learn. But I think this whole thing with COVID has really changed a lot too. You have a lot of quarterbacks, fifth, six year quarterbacks yes. now that do have a bunch of experience under their belt. And that showed all season this year. And, and we played it, we played a great one in the, in the college football playoff in Michael Shoot. Penix. Yes. I mean, a fantastic player, but you could feel his experience, right? Yeah. And in the opportunity, there was no coverages from a collegiate level that he hadn't seen that he wasn't comfortable playing against. Gives you some solutions to some of the things, some of the problems that have been presented to you in the pocket as Frank Gore Jr. breaks off another one. Big time hole opened up off that right side and Frank Gore going to get a fresh set of downs on a big third and six run coach. A little, a little confidence there from the play caller, right? Yeah, well, I, I, again, I think that's part of the college game yeah. leaking into the NFL, right? Yeah. That, that, that uh, the, the ability to want to run it on third down in this kind of field zone here around the logo, around the 50, because more people or analytics are saying, go forward on fourth down. That's right. So you, you have a little bit more freedom there to run it, and you can, sometimes you can get an advantageous box to, it to create an explosive play. That's great context as a proud dad watches on as his son has had some highlight-worthy plays for sure. Frank Gore 
16,000 career rushing yards in the NFL. Get a little extra coaching right there on the sideline. Has there ever been, is Frank still playing? <laughs> Has there ever been a father-son running back playing at the same time in the NFL? I think so, but we're, we got close. I mean, he almost put it off. He yeah. almost played long enough where he could play with his son. 16 years, 16,000 yards. A shining example of consistency and consistent production at the highest level as Talia now has his team in plus territory and again going to showcase that mobility coach he feels so slippery and and then you throw that with his quick hands and man he causes some problems for defenses he really does and it, it, a lot of it is you know like in the rpo game he can make those throws on time yeah. and, and really carve you up but Offense it's the off schedule plays that he's always penalty. excelled that right his Repeat, ability to down. extend plays make those throws down the field he hit the tight end i think earlier down that far sideline um, but then when it's not there he still has the speed to to go get you eight nine ten twenty yards because he's got the legs to to go do that coach you've got a play called in the national football league and so how advantageous is it to have someone that's athletic at the position that can buy time and maybe make your play calls right when they're not right with their athleticism. Well, that's always helpful. Not many of them, though, right? That's, that's, that's always helpful. We always we always kind of pretend to be the, the smartest and have the perfect play every time. But when your quarterback can do this and buy you time and make that play right there, that's, I mean, what else are you looking for, right? When, when you can do things like that to extend those plays and then you have a receiving core that understands when the quarterback's moving, what that feels like and how it looks. And, I mean, there's nobody better than Mahomes, obviously, yeah, sure. and what he's been able to do in his career. And now I think that people are getting more comfortable allowing the quarterbacks to, to play that style. And uh, I think that's why you're seeing some of these new age quarterbacks coming in the league yeah. having some success. And how about Taj Washington showcasing some physicality after the catch, which of course presents some value as you're trying to get every yard possible with Talia Tukumalo and now has this offense just outside the 20 yard line and hand it off to Frank Gore Jr. again, who's making cuts oh, nice and making moves to break tackles and get loose now down inside the five. How about some electricity from Gore? Let's take a look here. Coach, tell us what you see. Well, they're running a little zone scheme, and I think we get out of our gaps here at linebacker with, with the tight end sliding back, and it's a good read by Gore, taking it up the middle. Um, you know, I, I you know during the bowl season, you get a chance to watch different bowl games. I think it was not this past bowl season, but the year before, I think I watched him rush for like 300 yes, yards. Yes, 329. Yeah, 300 yes. yards yes. in a bowl game. I'm thinking, uh -oh, uh -oh. They, they, you know, this guy's going to run. He, he's, 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 he ain't going to make it. I mean, if the holes look like that one we just saw, and he just kept, yes. just kept running through it. Uh, I was peeking at our stat monitor because I wanted to see how close we were getting to 100 yards uh, here, which you don't see very often, Buck, in an all-star game scenario. Coach, I just got to tell you, the last couple of years when we've done the game, you haven't seen, like, the kind of fireworks that we're seeing, offenses moving up and down the field. It's been great to see, and some of that has been the impact of, we talked about, Leah being able to execute the RPOs, you hit a couple of those to passes, it seems like it opens up the run game as well. Well, I don't, I'm not quite sure on all the rules, but I, 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 think, I, think, I think the defenses have to be a little bit They're simplistic. Little yes. and, and when you're starting to, when you're starting to add RPOs to this stuff, uh, the, the quarterback should have a pretty distinct advantage and you're not blitzing as much, they can move around a little bit better. Um, but in the end, I think that's why you get a good turnout like we have yes. tonight. That's what people want to see. They don't, they don't want to come to an all-star game and, and see 10 to 7, right? They want to see playmaking. They want to see high-flying fireworks and things of that nature. Yeah, you tell that to defensive coordinator uh, David Borgonzi, <laughs> who was sitting here trying to come up with the call to shut yes. the door. Hey, it was funny. I saw him in the hotel lobby as he was coming to the game. Yeah. I should have said something to was him. Was he in Jets gear or, or was he in he had his Bears gear here, which is, which is great. And, yeah. you know, I, I, we, one thing we love about the coaches here is they're getting to coach in elevated positions, yeah. no, which is I, valuable. I think this that is one of the best things that the NFL has done mm -hmm. and these all-star games have done is taking a lot of the younger coaches, giving them Offense, an opportunity to... five-yard penalty remains third down. Keep giving them an opportunity to be head coaches, be coordinators, coach a position, and not only is it advantageous for them, right, to, to get that experience, but for the players to get coached by those guys who are hungry, who are energetic, who are excited to be doing it, and then the evaluation is great for both sides. Coach and linebackers for Matt Eberflus in Chicago is actually for Coach Borgonzi. This is his fourth opportunity to coach in the Shrine Bowl. Getting a chance to call the defensive plays in here. He's had his defense on the field for quite a while in this possession. Here's Talia 
Talking about Loa again, just finding some open space in the pocket and get that ball out to Jabari Small. That's Indiana's Aaron Casey coming up with the stop right there. As the clock continues to roll, as we get close to the two-minute warning, going to bring up a fourth and goal opportunity. Boy, Coach, we're going to get a field goal uh, here from Cam Little uh, in Arkansas. And... Uh, I was wondering if we had an injury with the kicker with the going for two right off the bat. Oh, yeah, I, I no didn't know extra that points. Was, no, I don't know if that was points. part of the rules. No I, I, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't read my rule book before <laughs> uh, I got here. That's all right. Well, you're a Hall of Famer. You can do whatever the heck you want. I was like, man, we're going for two right off the bat. Okay. That's right. 26 yard attempt here for Cam Little. Well within his range and a powerful leg. Coach, thank you so much for being with thank us here. And congrats uh, on your Hall of Fame induction here at the Shrine Bowl. And good luck to you. Thanks, guys. Uh, Appreciate with you. With the Longhorns this coming season. All right, the Frank Gore Show continues here from the Shrine Bowl, setting up a field goal opportunity as the West team extends their lead. All right, back here at the Star for the 99th Shrine Bowl. I want to let you know next Thursday, Keegan-Michael Key hosts NFL Honors, presented by Invisalign during Super Bowl 58 weekend in Las Vegas. Find out who will bring home the NFL's most prestigious awards. NFL Honors, presented by Invisalign next Thursday, 9, 8 Central on NFL Network and CBS. Well, that was a lot of fun, man, getting to get some insight on all things college football and the transition to the NFL from Shrine Bowl Hall of Famer and Texas head coach Steve Sarkeesian right there, Buck. Yeah, a lot of fun. You know, you think about just his collegiate success, but he was a play caller in the National Football League, so being able to look at the game from a few different ways and give insight on the quarterback position and some of the other positions. There's a look at Miles Murphy get his name tag off the helmet. We know, we know who he is. Uh, now he has announced his presence to this game with the pressure he's put on the quarterback, who is Devin Leary, now for the East team. Spent most of his career at NC State Buck last uh, year at Kentucky. Oh, rifle out to Isaiah Williams. Productive receiver for the Illinois Fighting Illini. And that will be the two-minute warning now with the West Squad up 17-3 to in a game that is featured Plenty of fireworks tonight and plenty of prestigious programs over the course of the 99 years. The East West Shrine Ball is all about showcasing the players, but also the amazing work of Shriners Hospital. Here are the players having a little fun with the kids yesterday. Love watching some of these guys like Walter Rouse, who wants to work with kids when football is over, enjoying hanging out with the kids. Speaking of some of those kids, I'm here with two amazing patient ambassadors from Shriners. Starting with you, Juan Diego. Tell me a little bit about your experience with Shriners Hospital. So my name is Juan Diego. When I was 13 years old, I got electrocuted by a high voltage wire back home in Teusiapa, Honduras. Three months after, they were able to contact what is Shriners Children's in Boston. And after that, you know, the rest is history. What it turns out to be the worst moment in my life turned out to be something good thanks to all the love and care that Shriners gave to me and with all their medical treatment included. Gianna, your own experience. Uh, I have PFFD, which means my left femur was malformed. And so at only 16 months old, I got a left leg amputation at Shriners Hospital. And ever since I've been getting treatment there and I totally feel at home and I've truly made a community and a, and a family there. As ambassadors, how much do you guys love being around these players but also interacting with some of the players that are going through what you guys went through? What, sorry, can you repeat it? What's it like being able to be around these players but also give back to some of the kids that have gone through some similar experiences you guys? Well, with the players at first, you know, it's kind of scary. You gotta go with a little bit of reverence because they are huge, you know, they are bigger than they seem on TV. But with the patients, it's just amazing to see their excitement and happiness to be able to play again after all the process they have been through. So it's Time just out. amazing West. and, you know, kind of turns compassion head. inside of me, you, you know, and happiness to go and play out with them. Now I'm here with Gianna and Roger Goodell. You're getting put on notice here because she wants to be the league's first female commissioner. Why commissioner? Why the NFL? So I started getting into the NFL about five, six years ago. I fell in love with the sport and I figured out that I want to go into a career in that path. And so being the NFL commissioner is the peak of administration. And so that ultimately became my goal, my reach. 
I love it. Well, like I said, this week has been so great getting to know some of the players, but more importantly, some of these kids that all of this game is about giving back to. We'll go ahead and send this to break. We'll be right back. very much have a plan work the plan plan for the unexpected love gianna having a plan and i'm sure that got a smile from commissioner roger goodell as well as the punt drops just inside the 10 bounces back and is then down by jacob cavoti who will have his east team offense in the two minute drill when we come back Coming up at the half as we sit here with 118 to go in the second quarter. Total access is on the way. Patrick Claybon, Cynthia Freeland, and former NFL quarterback Chase Daniel in studio to give you all the highlights from the first half. Get you ready for Super Bowl 58, and we'll get you back out here once we get ready for the second half as well. Uh, MVP favorite at the moment, Talia Tungabailoa, back in at quarterback to run this two minutes drill, something he showed real command doing in practice with us. Absolutely, quick hands, ball coming out, delivering on time. Ooh, trying to get a screen. Just overthrew it by a little bit. Blake Watson, another one of the talented receiving threats out of the backfield for the West team. Unable to corral that screen pass, had that pressure in his face very quickly, did Talia Tungabailoa. Just couldn't get it off. Seven, ten. So minute 13, Buck, we mm -hmm. actually get to see normal timing rules here inside the two minutes. So chance to really evaluate how they kind of run this hurry up style offense for offensive coordinator Davis Webb. They get, get some quick pressure, but able to spin out of it like he does so well and just throw that one away. Live to play another day. Yeah, good good situation awareness uh, for Leah being able to get the ball out of bounds. Like the pressure up front. Nice inside move. This is what Muhammad Kamar did time and time again at Colorado State. Forced Leah out of the pocket. Uh, now you have a third and long situation where he really is going to be able to get after. 13 sacks this season at Colorado State. Was a captain for the Rams and is a captain tonight. So leadership translating for Kamara. Looks to heat up Talia Tungabailoa on this third attack. And Leah able to get this one off. He does connect with Watson, who makes Easton Gibbs miss and goes for a first down and a fresh set of downs here. Roe Torrance finally brings Watson down. But they got this thing rolling now. You gotta get that first first down, right, to get things going in the two minute. And here we go with Talia. Gonna get some pressure, but again, calm in the pocket, finds his check down. Blake Watson feels like he knows where he wants to go with the ball. Absolutely, he feels like he, he has a clear understanding of where this check down is. Did a great job of getting to Watson. And Watson being able to turn check downs into first down, big part of the two-minute offense. Been a fantastic first half for Talia Tungabailoa. 8 of 12, 132 yards, and a rushing touchdown. And the way he started it off with the deep shot here. Yeah, he started off with the explosive play, working off the script. Then we see the scramble run, being able to put it in the paint. Uh, also came back, two-point conversion. I mean, Liz been in his bag early. Really excited about his game so far. You can see how he sparked this offense. Been fantastic. Actually, entered the transfer portal following this year at Maryland. Was hoping to get a waiver to play another year. NCAA ended up denying that waiver, so off he goes to the NFL, and like he's showing he's ready for the moment. He's got his offense now with a second in short. Under a minute to play. Leah trying to find Taj Washington, but that just out of his reach. Yeah, just need to stay patient. Kind of drifted on the throw, which is why the ball sailed over the intended target's head. Just has to sit in there, deliver a perfect throw. That should have been a first down. Clock stops on the incompletion, 34 seconds to go. No timeouts left, though, for the West. So I don't know how much they worked on the fast field goal operation here, Buck, but we might, <laughs> might have a chance to see it. It's good. Give a chance to see how everyone operates yeah. under the rest. All right, third and two now for Talia Tungabailoa. Oh, run the ball. All right, Jabari Small going to try to get the first down. Hey, hey, here we go. Here. Easy up, easy up. Short. If they're able to, where really they end up spotting this. East team ends up taking the timeout, feeling they came up and stopped Small short on the third and two. And 
think he did, Buck. Yeah, it looks like he's short. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a time out there and see what they do on fourth down. In the meantime, though, Saturday, the future stars of the NFL will take center stage at the Reese's Senior Bowl. The NFL Network there, of course, with exclusive access to the Reese's Senior Bowl Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern, live on NFL Network. You guys have been doing a great job of the practice coverage over the first few days. More stars of the college game are going to make that transition to NFL draft prospects. You see Dave Borgonzi calling in his defensive play here on a fourth and short that Mike Kafka, the head coach here, says, let's go for this thing here, buddy. Yeah, that's right. You want to punish him. If they were going to call a timeout, give us an opportunity to get right. <laughs> we should be able to get a few inches, and then that would extend the drive and continue to play uh, in a two-minute offense situation. Uh, I did serve Frank Gore into the lineup here. If, if I was Kafka, <laughs> but, I, but he's been fantastic today. Jabari Small is actually noted as one of the best inside runners and he's gonna get it inside Gary here. Looks like he's gonna push forward for the first down. Okay, so now you get a chance to see them run the operation. Two minute drill. Can Leah keep the offense calm and continue to move it down the field? All right, first set of downs. Clock is rolling. 12 seconds to Leah Tungavailoa. Complete to Taj Washington. Breaks the tackle. Gonna get close to a first down again, but they are gonna run out of time. See if they can get up and clock this. They will not. And that is how the first half will end. But boy, we had some the fireworks the there, courtesy of Talia Tungabailoa and Frank Gore Jr. putting a pair of touchdowns on the board for the West squad. Added a field goal as well, which has contributed to the 17-3 lead for the West squad. They needed that extra timeout, just two timeouts for just each team. Each time. That's yeah. all they did. And it's been a lot of fun as we watch some of the best in college football get a chance to put on the pads one more time. Last time to see these guys, you know, actually play football before we embark on this draft process, Buck. That's right. That's why that lasting impression uh, really matters because this will be the last opportunity scouts see these guys play when they go back to meeting rooms. This performance will be fresh in their minds as they read the reports. All right, Jane Slater is down in the field with West Team head coach Mike Kafka. Coach, we saw early on in that opening drive a concerted effort to get the ball to Frank Gore. That resulted in a 49-yard touchdown run. How big was that to set the tone for your team? Oh, it was awesome. You know, that great fast start by the offense. Defense got to stop. So, overall, nice job so far. All right, I know it's a showcase, so you got to get your other quarterbacks in there. But how hard is it, given the fact that Talia's had such a hot hand tonight? Oh, he's doing a great job. You know, he's making some plays with his feet, obviously with his arm as well. And the whole line's blocking for him. Receivers are getting open. So overall. Good operation. Appreciate your appreciate your time, guys. Back into the booth. Thank you. Jay, thanks very much. Mike Kafka's squad is rolling, and that is the end of that first half with that score West up 17 to 3 over the East. Stay tuned for the halftime report. Patrick Clayton, Cynthia Freeland, and Chase Daniel coming right up. side through the air with Talia Tonga by Loa on the ground with those 111 rushing yards Frank Gore big part of that equation East team gotta pick up the pace a little bit and for more on how they plan to do that let's set it down to Jane Slater with Richard Hightower coach those inside runs from Frank Gore Jr. tough how do you tell your defense to shore up here in the second half yeah I just think he's got to settle in and play football get back to the basics but for the most part, they got to stop at the end of the half there, uh, which was good. And they just got to settle in. And we got to clean some things up and then go back to work and play some ball. What message did you have? Um, I mean, it is an opportunity to reset here coming out in the second half. What specific message do you have for them before they come out of the locker room? Yeah, I just referred to uh, what we looked at the other day in the meeting room in the, in the, uh, in the division around. I mean, in the championship game, obviously, uh, with the 49ers and uh, Detroit, you know, being up. And then the 49ers coming back with resilience and just playing like they did in the NFC Championship the game there, and now they're in the Super Bowl, so, yeah. Good reminder and a teachable moment for these guys. This is the NFL. I appreciate it so much, Coach. Appreciate Best of luck in the second you. half. 
great work, Jane. East head coach Richard Hightower maybe summoning his inner Brock Purdy. Uh, of course, 2022 <laughs> yes. Shrine Bowl alum now leading the 49ers into the Super Bowl. But this game has certainly been dominated on the ground by the West team squad. And running back Frank Gore Jr., 13 yards shy of 100. He had 1,300-yard games in his collegiate career, so no stranger to that type of production. Uh, and got that explosive play touchdown to get the scoring started for the West Coast. What do you see from him, Buck? Look, he's as advertised. They talked about him being a grinder guy that does work in between the tackles. And we saw that right out the gate. Right away, we saw an early handoff, cuts it to the backside, takes it the distance for a touchdown. It's not only the explosiveness that he displayed in the hole, it's the vision. It's being able to get to the backside. It's being able to find the creases in the seams and then finishing the runs the way that you want to see it. This guy is a pro. You understand it. Look, he watched his dad do it for so long. Dad's still giving advice. You love to see young players play with the kind of energy and explosiveness that Frank Gore has played with. And the kids who just shined in the flag football game at halftime love getting a chance to high five one of the stars of the game and a potential MVP candidate in Frank Gore Jr. Absolute stud so far for the West squad. Okay, teeing up the second half kick, which is the last kickoff that we will have yes. here in the East-West Shrine Bowl is Missouri's Harrison Nevis. 49 touchbacks in his career, but he only has a three-step approach, part of the rules here, so we could very well see a return from the West squad's Daquan Hardy, who had two punt returns for a score this year at Penn State, and here he were going to get tackled just north of the 25-yard line. Good coverage there from that East squad kick team. Yeah, good coverage. I uh, didn't see any big plays. Everyone came down. Did a really good job of containing, containing him. And you have to remember, so many of these players in this game have never really had to play special teams because they were frontline stars sure. on the current squad. Love the note from coaches about an opportunity to kind of come together and block for your teammates on kick return. Get excited for them when they make a play. We've certainly seen that as we welcome John Rice Plumley to the action at quarterback for the West squad. And Gonna take to the air. First and set up a little throwback screen to Blake Watson. West Walker's out in front and plenty of green before he is eventually brought down by Jackson Mitchell. Mike Kafka, look, Davis Webb, they, they have to cut this out. You can't run the all shut screen <laughs> right away in first game. You got this team pumped up trying to get back into it, so you know they're going to have their ears pinned back. He drops off the screen on the backside, had nice blocking, big explosive play. For the squad. You know, Davis Webb, the OC, is a quarterback's coach for the Broncos for Sean Payton, said he was a little, you know, kind of feeling the heat a little bit, a little nervous because he knew that Sean was going to be evaluating his play calling. I'd say right now he's acing the scorecard as the handoff once again goes oh, to Blake yeah. Watson, who shows you that burst through the hole and eventually brought down after another big game by Marcellus Dial. Yeah, this, this is a great play. This just a little delay draw. They slip it to Watson. He gets up inside. Love the vision. We talked about him being a former. Wide receiver turned running back. He did it at ODU. Did it again at Memphis at over 1,100 yards. Great finish. Boy, these West team running backs have been the stars of the show so far. And Davis Webb might be getting some offensive coordinator looks here soon with the way he's got this offense rolling. And speaking of rolling, there goes oh, Rice Plumley. He's on the money to Josh Cephas. And we got chunk play after chunk play to start this drive. Okay, so we talked about it for the players being an opportunity for them to show people what they can do, but also for the coaches. Davis Webb has really done a really good job of getting his players in rhythm. You see Plumley here coming out the back door on a bootleg. They've been able to run on the front side, come out the back door with the bootleg. It's a nice mix, a nice balance. It's the players, but also a really good job by Davis Webb setting them up. Joshua Cephas there making his second catch of the ball game and his fourth total on NFL Network. Caught two passes in a 2019 game for his UTSA Roadrunners against Army in a game we had here on NFL Network from San Antonio. And a flag flying as Plumley showcases his athleticism. Oh, boy, a big time stop by Richard Jubinor from Troy to keep that from becoming a big play. Yeah, that was a big time spot. It was needed because this team has been rolling on offense. Way to come up with a big play. And it's a Looks like the penalty is going to be on the defense here. So the challenging start for the East squad D continues. We'll see what the call is here from Mike Klesinski. Illegal contact. Defense number 48. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. 
So Easton Gibbs gets hit with the illegal contact. Again, we saw that in the first half. Again, changing of the rules a little bit here, Bucky. No contact a lot after five yards. Yeah, so everyone is having to adjust. The, the, the college players are so used to being able to get handsy all up and down the field in the pros. Talk about a five-yard five window where you can make that contact. They're having to adjust, playing with their feet instead of their hands. With Plumley, of course, uh, Probably the best athlete of the bunch here. Baseball player at Ole Miss and then at UCF. And now going to the end zone where he had a wide open receiver. Isaac Rex, the tight end, just overshot him a hair. Yeah, just overshot him. Good thing he's not disappointed because there's a flag on the play. <laughs> That's right. That pushed it back. Repeat first down. All right, so the West team offense hit the bit of a snag, and it's Garrett. Greenfield, one of five South Dakota State Jackrabbits in this game to lead all schools in terms of participation. The back-to-back -back FCS champs well represented. And we're going to bring up a first and very long here, Bucky. First and 20. So you just want to try and get half of it back and put yourself in a reasonable situation by the time you get the third down. And here's Plumley. Going to find Watson out of the backfield, but Aaron Casey, a tackle for loss machine, comes up with another one for the East team. But how about this day for John Rice Plumley, who played baseball at UCF and started a game on April 14th, 5 p.m. Eastern time, and went two for three with a triple and two ribbies, then took a golf cart to the UCF spring game where he tossed a couple of touchdowns and showcased Ed, the multi-sport talents that he has. By the way, 11 jacks in his career on the diamond. Look, you gotta like that. Evaluators love when guys have multi-sport background. The fact that he's a quarterback that has base baseball background. You heard Sark allude to middle infielder hands, the quickness, being able to transition those things. Some of that stuff you can only get by playing additional sports outside of football. By the way, probably the only quarterback in this draft class with 300-yard passing games, a 200-yard rushing game, which he had against LSU his freshman year at Ole Miss, and a 100-yard receiving game, which he had against Liberty, while also playing for the Reds. And another flag flies as Blake Watson catches that pass from John Rice Plumley, and we're going to have an illegal man downfield, I think, here, Buck. Let's see what the call ends up, but would negate a nice gain there as they were trying to get some of that penalty yardage back. And there it is, in fact, an illegal man downfield. Yeah, look, just trying to do it. I, I, look, I, I know they had practice time, but we're seeing screens. We're seeing <laughs> bootleg. We're seeing all kinds of stuff. I mean, look, great job by both coaching staffs getting their teams prepared. But it's pretty impressive in terms of uh, the catalog of plays that we're seeing from the West Coast. No question. Mike Kafka and Davis Webb, offensive brain trust. Is Come up with a nice plan here, save for the penalties that now has made this a third downfield. Offense number 59, five yard penalty, repeat third down. Argue with the 59 identifier there. I think that was 54, Dylan McMahon, the center that might've got down just a hair. Early. Setting up the screen. Part of those details that all these coaches have talked about is you get a look at Aaron Casey, who's been a monster from the linebacker spot for this East team defense as they try to bend but not break here in the red zone. Third down snap and low for the Plumlee. He's able to get it and rolling out to his right again, going to the end zone and flags fly once again. We're going to get a P.I. White that shows you the benefit of taking a shot on a play like that. Yes, that's just, that should be a P.I. That's going to put it. Put it right at the goal line. It's like Renardo Green from Florida State might get the call Pass here. interference. Oh, yeah, Defense number 36. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. Automatic first down. So Jaden Yonke, you might remember from the first half, catching that 52-yard bomb from Talia Tungavailoa. That penalty right there was drawn by his identical twin brother, and fellow South Dakota State Jackrabbit wide receiver, Jackson Yonke. So they've only ever played on opposite teams when they play ping pong. <laughs> you gotta like that. First and goal. And it's Plumlee gonna keep it, and Plumlee easily into the end zone for another West touchdown. Nice play. Nice Take a look. Play. 
Puts it in the belly, a little RPO. A little read option play for a tough. Plumlee, the author of 28 rushing touchdowns in his career. We'll give him 29 on that one. And again, no extra points. So Plumlee will be back out there to try to put two more points on the board for a dominant West offense here. Well, look, I'm not going to lie. Plumlee had me confused because I see Nice on one side of the helmet. Oh, Miss That's right. on the That's other right. side. That's right. You know, we had talked about these guys not trading off stickers, so it confused me for a minute. But shout out to him for representing both of his schools that he attended. Six play, 78 yard drive, eating up nearly five minutes, looking to cap it off with a two point conversion. And again, oh, Plumlee going to keep it. Can't be afraid to repeat uh, plays. Aaron Casey got held, I think, by the tight end, Isaac Rex. 83, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the try. Right, unique situation here. Now we get to try the two-point conversion from the 13-yard line. Yeah, so you get to try it from uh, deep, so probably won't be a, a read option play. But this to <laughs> give us an opportunity to see Plumlee try to throw the I ball mean, in. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't rule anything out with <laughs> Davis Webb. Plumlee is, you know, has that knee brace on, but boy, does he have the mobility. He's got the rock going to the end zone, looking for Cephas. Did he hang on? No, he didn't. Couldn't quite slide through to make that, but the touchdown has done the damage. And Plumley, the author of another scoring drive for the West that has them up 23 to 3. 10 17 remaining in the third quarter. Five hundred plus Pro Bowlers have graced the East West Shrine Bowl, and we're proud to call one of them a friend and a Shrine Bowl Hall of Famer, playing in the seventy-sixth edition of this game back in 01. Steve Smith, senior from Utah, found the paint twice with those two receiving touchdowns and inducted this year into the Shrine Bowl Hall of Fame. Our colleague here at NFL Network could be more proud of you. Congratulations, oh, man! You. Getting to see the beginning of an NFL journey right there is pretty cool too. Huh? Yeah, this is cool. Been here uh, a couple of days now. Got an opportunity to have breakfast, break some, break some bread with these guys, get to know them, give them some advice. Uh, it's been fun. What kind of advice did you give them? Uh, you know, you know me being straight up, straightforward. <laughs> uh, give them a little math skills, but also too just, uh, you know, just kind of telling them this is a is the start of a process, and everything you do moving forward, uh, everybody and anybody is paying attention and watching. And this is. Uh, this is the journey. This is the start of your professional career. Nice start to this drive by the East team offense. Definitely has some work to do. Down 20 points. Devin Leary in at quarterback. Connects with Cornelius Johnson. Had three catches in the national title game for the Michigan Wolverines. Um, you know, a legend like yourself here in the league, you got to see another legend down on the field in Frank Gore, who's yeah. watching his son go yeah. off tonight. How cool is that? It's great because if you see Frank Gore, you know, you, you, if you watch uh, football, you can see Frank Gore Jr. You can see his dad in the way he carries his shoulder pass, the way he runs, the way he carries the ball, the way he finishes. Uh, I think Frank Gore Jr. has a great opportunity to show you, right, that he knows exactly who he is. He's not the tallest, but it's not about being the tallest. It's about the efficiency and the body of work. And, Frank Gore Jr. can play some football, and I believe if he continues to do what he's doing and uh, shows that it's just not a name, but he actually knows the X's and O's, and you get him right with the right X's Ooh. and O coach, he can be just like his dad to impact the team very quickly. Oh, we're seeing some X's and O's here. How about the juice from the wide receiver spot on a little end around from Isaiah Williams out of Illinois there, Steve? I like it. He hasn't gotten many opportunities. Yeah. Uh, a lot of receivers haven't consistently, but I love their patience and how they're playing ball and just taking their opportunity. So a lot of good young wide receivers yeah. uh, that aren't getting the yeah. action in the game, but they got a lot of one-on-ones and show that they can play football in the National Football League and, and, and take their game to the next level. Isaiah was the practice player of the week for the East team wide receivers and one of the stars overall of this game as Leary going end zone for the Big target from Michigan, Johnson, unable to pull that down. But he could have got it, though. What's that? He 
could have got it. If he released a little bit, gave him a little bit, indicator step, and give him, not push off, but give him a little chicken wing in the elbow <laughs> rib. Chicken wing. Little that elbow push rib. Off. That yeah. means push off. A little bit elbow and rib, you know, where, uh, you know, the, the rib that Adam gave Eve. Uh, be that's okay. It. That's it. But so, but those details, you know, Steve, aren't something that these coaches who are NFL coaches have been trying to impress upon these players that, that you know, can make the difference in a, you know, a five-yard gain and a 15-yard gain. I was I would disagree. Okay. Here's why. These some of these players that I've talked to, you're trying to implement in three days yeah. what some of these coaches have implemented in four or five years. And so some of these kids are just not able to implement some of these techniques. So you're speaking the NFL is Spanish right. yes, to right. a college kid, which is Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, sure. And then, and so it's kind different of different dialects. Man, it's just a struggle a little bit. And so, a, a few of the guys I talked to you said, "Man, what do I do? I've been learning this technique for, for for four years, and now in three days, I haven't. I now have to change completely." And I said, "Man, I feel for you." I said, "But in this instance, I agree." But you can't use that excuse when you're in training camp. You have to do right. that technique. Yeah. And they were like, okay. But I said, in this game, don't tell anybody. Uh oh. <laughs> go you to your play. technique. Yeah, you gotta play. You, I said, go to your technique that makes you comfortable. Do what they're telling you to do. But go to what you know so you can show out in this game. And then you got all of off season, OTAs, mini camps to go ahead and learn the new technique that you're gonna have to learn. Oh. Oh, oh boy, a little oh. awareness uh, that Devin Leary was looking for there on a fourth down, but he slides short of the first down, unable to get it, and that will be a turnover on downs. But Steve, man, that's some valuable advice you're giving to these players and that you're able to spend some time with them is super cool. And really awesome for us to see you go into the Shrine Bowl Hall of Fame. Right there with Steve Sarkeesian. They put a BYU and Utah guy in. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Back to Frisco next. Holy. All right. This East West Shrine Bowl, no strangers to future stars. Brock Purdy and Isaiah Pacheco, just a few of those that participated in this event a couple of years ago. And we are here with Eric Gelko, who helped bring these guys. Talk to me a little bit about what goes into the invitations. Yeah, it's a long process. Our staff will start in about a month and a half for next year's Shrine Bowl, but we work with our own team and scouting internally, but also work with NFL teams on a year-round basis to make sure that we're putting the best players we can have here for them to evaluate all year long. Now, it feels a little unfair that they got Frank Gore over there as well as Talia Tonga Viola. How did that happen? You know, we just divide the rosters up by what these guys can be best at to play in the game and, and impress NFL teams that way, too. But certainly Frank Gore Jr. looking a lot like his dad in this game so far. It's been awesome to watch him play. How proud are you of you of guys like Brock Purdy and Isaiah Pacheco have had the success that they've had. You know, I'm very proud of those guys, and, and we try to take as little credit their journey as possible, but a, a chance for these guys to be here and have part of their legacy in the NFL start here at the Shrine Bowl means a lot to our team and our staff as well as the Shriners Children's to make sure these guys get a chance to kind of use this event to, to further themselves in the NFL career, and we're very honored to have Brock be able to represent our Shrine Bowl this year as he goes on in Super Bowl. So many players, so many opportunities for them. Credit to you for giving them this platform. It's been fun this week to see how it all comes together. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys? Appreciate that, Jane. And this is a fantastic roster again here this year. And, you know, it does make you wonder when you have guys like Purdy and Pacheco and then guys from last year's game like defensive rookie of the year finalist Kobe Turner who led all rookies in sacks playing in the interior next to Aaron Donald for the L.A. Rams. Makes you wonder, like, who those next legends and who those next stars could be. Yeah, like we, we've seen this game kind of serve as a launching pad for a bunch of players when it came to their careers. Everyone to talk about Brock Purdy, but what about Aiden O'Connor? You talked about uh, Kobe Young and all those other guys. There are a handful of guys that have played well in this game that have helped themselves, not only their draft status, but in terms of getting their careers off to a jump start. Carry from Jabari Small uh, for minimal gain as you get a look at the practice players of the week from the West squad. And it was John Rice Plumley who's man in the quarterback spot now that got that honor for the QB position. Blake Watson, who we saw star in that first drive of the second half for the West team, was part of the running back group uh, that really impressed. Isaac Rex, tight end practice player of the week. Mason McCormick has been a real favorite. We don't yes. often get a chance to give a lot of love to the offensive linemen in games like this, but the South Dakota State guard has been one of the favorites of coaches 
here at the game. Yeah, and Coach just talked about him being the best offensive lineman in attendance, the way that he played, the ruggedness, the scrappiness that he displayed. Not surprising that he was able, that he was named one of the practice players of the week. Jackson Yankee making another grab there, had the first catch of this drive, and now another one to move the sticks once again. Get a look at Yankee, one of those five South Dakota State Jackrabbits. There's his identical twin brother crossing the screen as well, Jake Miyake. As we get set for another first down play here for John Rice Plumley. JRP gonna go for the tight end. Mason Fairchild from Kansas makes the grab. About a yard gain. Tackled by Kenny Logan. As we look at the East Team practice players of the week. And on the defensive side out there now, Omar Brown, the safety from Nebraska, was impressive this week. Josh Wallace, a couple of picks in practice from the national champion Michigan Wolverines in there as well. Easton Gibbs, linebacker of the week in practice. And then Christian Boyd has been a real yes. intriguing and popular name. When we talk about Kobe Turner-like impacts, mm -hmm. especially from that interior. Now he's a much different frame, but could end up starring for an NFL team early on in his career. Absolutely could. And you talk about interior pass rushing presence he has that uh, did a great job throughout his career being able to get after you just see the numbers 22 and a half tackles for loss 10 and a half sacks from an inside position you love that production you love the power that he also displays yeah maybe more of a nose tackle than a kobe turner he's got a little bit of that smaller frame akin more akin to what aaron donald has done but yeah boyd is a a big time impact type of player and was this week at practice as we set up a third and long now for John Rice Plumley with Blake Watson in the backfield next to him from the gun. JRP getting a little pressure, pocket collapsing as a flag comes out and he gets wrestled to the ground by David Ogwebu, the edge rusher from Houston. Gets to add a sack to his tally after we assess the penalty. Yeah, really good job. Holding offense number 75. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Right, Bucks away rare yeah. drive stall here for the West. Yeah, really good job. This guy's working. You see Muhammad Kamara, the, the pocket eventually collapsing. Great job to finally get the quarterback down. Felt like a nice team pass rush right yes. there, you know, which is, again, one of those underrated qualities that we'll get a chance to talk about a ton is we get our first chance to see Ryan Rico, a punter from BYU. And he booms one, tickling the rafters here at the Ford Center at the Star. Caught by Good job. That's matching. Anthony Gould. Oh, that's a match. Makes one miss. And oh. Anthony Gould makes Got action. Nobody's going to catch Anthony Gould from Oregon nice. State. Maybe the spark the East team no really needed. Good job. And that's the first time we've seen Anthony Cool touch the ball, Bucky Brooks, and boy, did he make it count. Did he make it count? The, the, here's the thing, Brett. In a production meeting, the coaches talked about they're being excited and optimistic that they can get an explosive play in the kicking game. They see it. Deep line drive punt. Goal takes it, makes a move, gets a spin out, and then finishes it. Terrific play by the Oregon State Beep. Something he's done before in his career back in 2022. First team all Pac-12 return specialist thanks to his two punt return touchdowns that year and showing you just how dangerous he can be. I imagine that goes right into his NFL draft profile here, Buck, as we now uh, get the two-point conversion. And we're gonna get a new fresh quarterback in for the two-point conversion. It's Austin Reed from Western Kentucky going in zone. Oh. He's got it complete. Here we go. Stoops. 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 <laughs> the crowd erupt. Drake Stoops capitalizing off the punt return touchdown from Gould. Reed to Stoops, and we got a ball game here for the 99th Shrine Bowl. Thanks to the punt return fireworks, it's 23 to 11, a two-score ball game when we return. Since 2005, the East-West Shrine Bowl has given the Pat Tillman Award to one of the players in the game, named after the 1998 Shrine Bowl defensive MVP out of Arizona State. This award honors a player who has exemplified character, intelligence, sportsmanship, and service, both on and off the field. And the 2024 East-West Shrine Bowl Pat Tillman Award winner is Trey 
Taylor from Air Force, who Richard Hightower and defensive coordinator David Borgonzi, uh, both of the Chicago Bears leading this East team, have absolutely raved about. Phenomenal kid, no surprise, coming from Air Force, great leader, intelligent. One of those box safeties that'll come up and sting you, too. Yeah, they talk about his intelligence, his toughness, just the way that he was a natural leader, set the tone for the defense. Very look, excellent communicator. Um, so it's not a surprise he won the award. Jim Ford. That's, that's right. That's, that's big time. He got a full mantle with his uh, trophies from this season at Air Force. And I imagine seeing the Tillman Award handed to a service academy player is likely to make the Tillman family smile as well. And no question that Taylor has earned it. John Rice Plumley still in the game here with under four minutes to play in the third quarter. As he has Blake Watson from Memphis off to his right. And it's Watson that gets the pitch out quickly. But this East team defense ready for that quick pitch and talking about Taylor well you know the constraints on his time and the responsibilities he has at a service academy here's a look at a day in the life buck up at 6 30 into morning formation uh, just astronautical engineering uh, classes at 8 30 philosophy at 9 30 gets into officer development around lunchtime practice in the afternoon lights out at 11 it is a full day, full day. and that is like an almost every day type of scenario Taylor. Man, I, didn't, I didn't see nap time in there. No, no sir. All, the, all those activities. There, no, sir. There needs to be nap time. Jeez. Very regimented, structured, and it's uh, pretty clear that Taylor has been able to take advantage of that kind of preparation. Illegal contact. Defense number 20. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. All right, so we get a fresh set of downs. And for Taylor, you know, talking to David Borgonzi, uh, before the game about what he's seen in Taylor and says he could be one of those, you know, box safety guys that, you know, stick his face into the run game, but can a cat attach to tight ends yes. in coverage so provide some of that versatility from the safety spot. Yeah, he certainly had a really good week. Uh, they're really impressed with his versatility yeah. down in the box and it's tough. Like another linebacker when he gets down there. All right, first and 10 handoff straight up the gut from Watson gets a couple a nice tough run. We'll give him four yards and make that a second and six now as West team maybe a bit more methodically moving down the field after all the razzle dazzle earlier in this game. Yeah, kind of slowing it down, controlling the tempo a little bit. Uh, it's that fine line because look, the coaches are very prideful. They, yeah. they want to win. You also want to showcase the players. So it's that, that yin and yang in terms right. of trying to win the game while also giving those guys a chance to showcase their skills. Davis Webb, the OC, said uh, his head coach at Denver, Sean Payton, was a little upset that his team didn't have a fullback. Yes. <laughs> yes. And they I know this would be a perfect time for it. Yeah, and I know Sean is watching, so Davis has to be on his P's and Q's when it comes right. to managing the game like a champ. And now picking up the pace here a little bit, perhaps trying to catch the East team without a personnel switch as they go to third and short here. They turn around, hand it off to Jabari Small. Close. Gets close, but I think this East team defense stood tall. Easton Gibbs in there. Looks yeah, like fourth down. Oh, we got decisions. Here you go, Ace. Got decisions to make here. All right. All right, so here's the chance that Hightower wanted. He, got wanted, it. he wanted to turn it back like it was the Niners and the Detroit Lions. That's right. Feel for fourth down gave Detroit a chance does it happen here? 17 point deficit for the Lions as he was talking about relaying that message to his guys in the locker room to Jane Slater uh, oh. and it looks like oh. the East team defense we go. has come up with the stop and we could be seeing a turning of the tide here after that punt return and now a turnover on downs yeah turnover on downs great stop good penetration inside nails him in the tracks love it man just one-on-one -on -one tackling Makes the play. Good job throwing him out of the club. That's a Guaybu at the sack earlier in the second half. Boy, that's a pretty good discipline right there. He did a really good job squeezing down. Yeah. You talk about a zone read play. Uh, didn't let his shoulders turn. Stay square to the line of scrimmage so he could go either way. That's a great play by him to get off the field on fourth down. Christian Boyd providing some interior run stuff presence there as we were just talking about his big frame as a nose tackle type body. Kind of help it free things up and keep a Guaybu there to 
Go ahead and make that stop that gives new life to this East team, bringing the offense back on the field with Austin Reed from Western Kentucky. Big play action. Can get the tight end involved, and he does. And it gets a big lick. As <laughs> yeah, Reed got a big lick because he tried to jump. Mason Ply. I guess this is a hurdle attempt, but he, uh, he, he was jumping over the, the low hurdles and there were high hurdles in front of him. Like, this is not, this is not what we should be doing. Well, look, Klein, is that Klein that ended up, had to s take a seat here as we get the medical staff out to check on. Look, he's used to using his vertical and athleticism. He just played basketball at Ferris State before transferring uh, to Furman. Average seven points a game, four boards. In the first two years of his collegiate career as the medical staff is taking a look at him. Final year at Furman for Klein. Saw him catch 31 balls and big time impact player for the Paladins. Hope this is something he's gonna be able to shake off as Richard Hightower runs out there to check on his tight end. obviously one of those scenarios you know buck where you know all-star game situation you know the number one goal for so many of these players is just to come out of the game healthy right continue on in the draft process we certainly hope that this is something minor for Klein as he's helped off the field a little bit of weight on that right leg which seems to be the root of the problem Make a play, you know, and, and that, that is another part of this mm -hmm. the, the pressure to impress and to put good tape out there and to, you know, try to further you know, your playing career. So, you know, we'll take a further look at Klein. We'll update you when we get one. Get back to the action with Austin Reed and a pitch out. Jacob Cavoni takes oh. one miss and he gets brought down after a nice game by Damani Richardson out of Texas AM. Number 10, Jacob and that will end the third quarter with the East team driving and the West team trying to hang on to a lead up 23 to 11 as you get some of the sights and scenes from another great practice week here at the 99th East West Shrine. West on top with a score of 23-11 and the corner on their team, Quantes Stickers, is a name you're going to hear a lot about leading up to the draft. He didn't play college football, he wanted to, but his father was in an awful car wreck his freshman season following a month-long coma before succumbing to his injuries. It was too much for Stiggers, and he dropped out to help his 13 siblings across a blended family. He picked up jobs cleaning cars at the airport, worked at DoorDash. His mom ultimately encouraged him to sign up for the 7-on-7 seven -seven fan-controlled football league in Atlanta, playing at four of the eight teams. From there, an invitation to play in the CFL, where he was awarded the league's most outstanding rookie. Tonight, he's had a pass breakup and a tackle. Listening to a bunch of these scouts leading up to this week, this is absolutely a guy they're keeping an eye on. Jay coaches raved about Quantes being a pro already, but yes. still loving his attitude and the way he has attacked the coaching he's received here. Most CFL players, once playing, would already have the opportunity to go to the NFL. He didn't have that opportunity because he didn't go through a draft process, and he made his impact early, huh? Yeah, made his impact early. You see him, look, he, he goes after the ball. He does a great job of tackling. The fact that he has pro experience already, to me, is a benefit. Played a full season in the CFL, was most outstanding rookie. This guy has big-time juice, explosive traits. He's going to have a chance to hear his name called over draft week. And we'll be participating in the Georgia Bulldog Pro Day, so we'll see him again as Austin Reed has the snap for the East Team offense going back shoulder, trying to connect, but couldn't quite get it done. And Austin Reed, phenomenally productive player in college football, started his career at Southern Illinois and then ended up in West Florida where he actually won a D2 national championship yes. before transferring into Western Kentucky, where he threw 31 touchdowns this last year and 40 the year before. So talk about big-time production. Yeah, big-time production. When, when you watch him, 
play. This is a guy that is a master at the air, air raid, quick rhythm throw, a ball comes out of his hand really quickly, and does a great job of just finding uh, how to attack those open windows. And here he is, open little jump throw, as he has that connecting with Cornelius Johnson, finding a way to make a play from inside the pocket under some duress. Let's take a look at that, Buck. You gotta like it. Sits in the pocket, tries to move up. Little jump pass ability. Different angles. Not bad. So I love that Drew Terrell, the uh, the offensive coordinator for the East team, said he loves how funny and fun-loving that Austin yeah. Reed is. Said that, you know, he was making some plays from under center, and, you know, would clap back at Terrell and be like, hey, uh, not bad for every quarterback. <laughs> Here's Reed trying to make it happen on fourth down, but just couldn't get it past the second level of the defense there. Pass breakup from Lavelle Bailey. Got his hands on that one. And the West team defense comes up with the stop to stop the bleeding. 13.07 to go in the game. 23-11, West on top. All right, back here with you, 23-11, West on top. Final 13 minutes of the 99th East-West Shrine Bowl from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, Texas. And Shrine Bowl this year is proud of the first-year collaboration with the NFLPA, which has introduced players to Pro Football Hall of Famers like DeMarcus Ware and Mean Joe Green, who had an opportunity to spend time with the edge rushers and the defensive linemen here, which is super cool. They were able to discuss responsibilities and what it takes to be a pro and shared NFL PA programs and services that are available to them once they make that transition to the NFL. By the way, quarterbacks, how about getting to spend some time with Mike Vick? How about that? Look, it's great that the NFL PA was involved and did a really good job of connecting the uh, new generation of players with some of the four games. Uh, so those guys can pass down their knowledge. It's one of the biggest and best fraternities that you can join when you become a national football player. Brett Lewis, Bucky Brooks here with you from Ford Center at the Star. Gene Slater down in the field. And watching Keaton Slovis back into the game. Now, Mike Kafka and Davis Webb devised a plan to let each quarterback get a quarter of action. Then whoever had the hot hand, they were going to put them back in in the fourth quarter. But Keaton Slovis only had three reps in the first quarter. Thanks to the Frank Gore explosive play. And so he's going to get a chance to showcase his skills here in the fourth quarter. We'll play action from Slovis. Gets out of trouble. And gonna try to take this himself and pick up some good yardage for getting out of Whoa. bounds. Tripped up down there. And we might get a flag for a late hit. Oh, yep, just a little bit extra from Ayabi Oki Anoma. Not a big hit, but. Just but enough to put in the hands. You can't put your hands you know. five yards out of bounds. You got to let them go. You can't touch anybody. And deciding on the flag there, Mark Klesinski, our referee tonight. Yeah, just that's that's a clear foul. personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number zero, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, unfortunate first time we're talking about Okianoma as a penalty, but the coaching staff has been really impressed with the way that he's kind of had some awareness about some of the things that will be in his background, having played at five different schools over his career, finishing at the University of Charlotte. And Coach Hightower said he made a point, talked to him every day, you know, said that Okianoma was just trying to find himself a little bit and, yep. and was really starting to you know, come into his own uh, this last year after the birth of his first child and see if he can make a play here to atone. And he came up with, uh, got first contact on the runner there behind the line of scrimmage, but eventually corralled by that East team. Yeah, very talented player. I mean, you see the height, weight, speed, the athleticism. He has all of those things. But as scouts, you won't worry. You want to question. He's bounced around a bunch. Uh, four or five different schools in his background and those things, but there's no doubt from a physical standpoint He has a lot of the traits that you look for as a scout. And he can rush the quarterback As was made very clear to us by the coaching staff of the East defense and here's Slovis Connecting with 
Josh Cephas from UTSA, been one of the most productive wide receivers in college football the last couple of seasons. And the flag comes down, looks like it's gonna be on that East team defense. We've had some pretty clean games the last couple of years. Prior here, to the pass, yeah, the holding defense number 37. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Mikey Victor, guilty party on that penalty. And we'll give the West team a first down. Here's the look at Oki Anoma and this pass rush skill set. But here's the one thing that you like. Watch him chase to the ball. He was able to run it all the way down. He tried to do a two, execute a two-hand swipe coming around the corner and didn't get to the quarterback, but was able to chase down and get to the receiver down the field. And that was one of the things that uh, Richard Hightower is stressed to his crew, want to see that fanatical effort, and saw it there. Easton Gibbs getting into the backfield to bring down Blake Watson. Also one on the play, so the East team defense again with this clock now south of 11 minutes, trying to get the ball back for their offense and trying to make up this two-score deficit. Yeah, trying to get the ball back. Uh, you want to see him play hard. You want to see him see if they can create a splash play of some sort. But it's going to be dependent upon the guys up front because you can't bless them to help them out. That's right. That's right. You got to win those one on ones if you're up front. And here's Keaton Slovis. Oh, oh, terrific connection. Does he hang on to it? I think he does. That's Zach Hines, another wow. South Dakota State Great Jackrabbit. Play by, by Hines coming right down the middle of the field. Uh, two deep coverage. Uh, he just looked, Slovis just drills it in there. That is a great job holding on to it. Takes the glancing blow in the shoulders, but finds a way to put it away. But it was Trey Taylor, the Pat Tillman yeah. award winner, coming in and trying to make a play on the football, which he did. You know, kind of forced it out of Hines' hands, but Hines, with yeah. the concentration, was able to come up and make it. His tight end coach at South Dakota State, you know, that was the one thing he said about elite ball skills. He will catch almost anything, which he did there. Oh, oh, trickery. John Rice Plumley gets the pitch from Slovis, trying to oh, oh. backfield pass. But for more on the East team, head coach Richard Hightower, Jane Slater with us down on the field. Well, guys, as Richard Hightower tries to find a spark on offense, we did see that sideline come alive when that 80-yard punt return from Anthony Gould, followed by that Stoops two-point conversion. Obviously, Hightower, special teams coordinator at the Bears, was juiced up about that. But back at Texas, that's where he made a name for himself. As I had reported earlier in the game, Mac Brown gave him a scholarship because of the contributions that he made on special teams. So, you know, they're still trying to find their way offensively in this game, but at least he got that done. Way to go, Jane. Appreciate that connection that you made with Coach Hightower. And I appreciate that little special place in my heart. Walk-ons turn scholarship players. Yes mentioned uh, the East team running back, Jacob Cabote. Yes, who's had a good day. He's had a nice day. Some explosive runs. One, you know, player that fit that bill, didn't earn a scholarship at Louisiana until his final season there in September of mm. the year. Ended up leading the team in rushing. As we get a third and ten now, so an opportunity to get off the field if you're the East team defense. Yeah, you got an opportunity. You got to get off the field. You got to find a way to make it happen. And then if you're keeping slow, you want to find a way to continue to play. You want to make more plays. Slovis oh, come on. stays in the pocket, tries to get a deep shot down to Jaden Yonke, but about uh, five yards overthrown as Slovis was under heavy duress. Man, Muhammad Kamara was just making a move, and he has had his way these one-on-one -on -one situations. Why not alignment? Watch him just work inside. Dips and rips could have been all the call, but gets inside, force quarterback to quicken the clock, the, the, the constant harassment. Coaches compared him to a Shaq Barrett type uh, off the edge. Little Colorado State connection, in fact. And one of the captains of this East team squad. And now they get it, get off the field and we'll get the punter, Ryan Rico, back out. Chance to showcase his directional pooch kicking, punting ability. And that ball down just inside the tent, so that'll do. And the East team offense will have another shot to make up this 12-point deficit. How about the stars mm. that the Shrine Bowl has seen from Sayers to Staubach? Who's next when we come back? Boy, we've had some fireworks from Frisco. West team up 23-11, to 11, thanks in part to an 
yard punt return score from Anthony Gould. Stunned in the punt return department at Oregon State. How about that slow spin move as he works his speed up near That's 20 crazy. miles an hour? That's incredible balance right there, Buck. Yeah, great, great awareness, great spin move in the hole in traffic. And one thing that you love about wide receivers at a punt returner is you can't question their toughness and their heart. Uh, his explosiveness, being able to put that on tape would do wonders for him in meetings. Guys just have an affinity for punt returners that can put yep. the ball in the paint. It might be his gateway to being able to enter a team, being able to be a dynamic kick, kick returner. Two punt returns for scores in 2022 for Oregon State. Then had a career year as a receiver this past season. Catching 44 passes for 718 yards and another two scores. Austin Reed back piloting the East team offense. And he's got a connection to Drake Stoops. Caught that two-point conversion that started to fuel that comeback. You know, Eric Galko was talking about the fact that three coaches called to petition him to get Drake Stoops in the game. None of them were named Stoops. Yes. It was Lincoln Riley. It was his coach, Brett Venables, and Jeff Levy, the former OC. He's a good, good player. When you watched him throughout the week, he, his ability to run routes, his steady hands, also has some punt return ability because he showed that he could catch it. Uh, he's going to have an opportunity to play. Jaden Sheridan the most productive running backs in all of college football the last couple of seasons playing at Monmouth. Uh, that pass is the East team really trying to up the tempo. So second catch of the day for Drake Stoops earlier on this drive and boy has he been productive. This last year 84 catches and a major uptick in production. Some of the reasons behind improvement like that for receiver Buck. Yeah, like sometimes you just settle in and you just think about opportunities and understanding the offense and knowing your role and getting with the right quarterback who develops a trust in you. He certainly has done that. And so he finished off his final season the right way. It, it bodes well for him because scouts love to see the uptick in production each and every year. Austin Reed trying to give Cornelius Johnson a chance. That ball, though, flies out of bounds. Stoops added 10 scores. You know this year and is already getting those Danny Amendola type uh, comparisons from his yeah. work in the slot. I mean, like certainly even the, the conversation here. You talk about Hunter Renfro was the sure. comparison. Offside, uh, defense number 99, five-yard penalty, results in a first down. All right, so that's going to give the East team a little charity thanks to the offsides call. 99 Gabriel Murphy the identical twin brother of Grayson Murphy with a sack back in the first half the West team sure did corner the market on identical twins <laughs> they absolutely did the Murphy's on defense the Yankees on offense and here comes Austin Reed oh, oh and look at the pick the pick made by Jarius Monroe who made an interception just like that in practice a big play machine this week at the Shrine Bowl and nobody anybody touch him he's taking that thing to the house I mean, I don't know. I know he had to get a celebration on, so you got to like that. But this is exactly what we saw from him in practice. Big, long, physical, athletic. Does a great job falling back into the zone. Takes advantage of a poor decision. Great career. Nickel State finished in Tulane and might try to finish this thing off for the West team when we come back. All right, back here at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. West up 23 to 11. Time for tonight's way to play moment of the game. And for that, we turn to West team linebacker from UCLA, Darius Muisau. Look, man, this is early in, in the game. You can see him. He's already on it. He's active. You can see his instincts and awareness. Just watch him boom. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Boom. Big play. Good tackle. Big hit. TFL for the defense. Boy, you know, we talked about that being a tone set and type play, and it is kind of bared some fruit for sure as the West team has dominated Muasau with 75 tackles, 10 and a half of them for a loss for the Bruins this year. As the West team offense now back on the field, thanks to the Jarius Monroe interception. And Keaton Slovis, maybe a little sudden change. He's got Blake Watson, though, checking it down. Jarius Monroe from Laplace, Louisiana, had some family in the stands here, and he's calling his mom down. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing like hand of the ball to mom. Yeah, yeah, thanks for all yeah. this, or dad. Yeah. And then it goes, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> nice, nice job, picks it off. 
started his career at Nickel State playing for head coach Tim Rebo. Absolutely raved about what he did for that program, the way he starred at a cornerback spot. They used him at safety a little bit this week, and he's made that work uh, as well. His brother now actually coaches at Nickel State. Look, he's, he's had a great week, and when you talk to the coaches, they talked about him being the energizer bunny in terms of what he brought to the table. Talkative, competitive, enthusiastic about everything, but really he went to work, um, and that's one of the reasons why he's going to have a chance. You see the body frame, you see the length and those those things, but the fact that he's a good worker, he's yeah. able to take to the coaching, and then you see the results on the field. A lot of things working in his direction. Yeah, uh, by the way, it's not just the ball skills from Monroe. Defensive coordinator Tim Lukabu said, uh, it makes me feel like he's going to knock somebody's teeth out on every play. So he can get in there in the run game, too, as Blake Watson on the ground for the West team offense. Blake Watson's been impressive, too. We talked about Frank Gore early, but he's done a really good job of not only running the ball, but catching the ball out the backfield, turning some of those check downs into first downs. Solid overall performance for Watson. Yeah, you mentioned he was a wide receiver at Old Dominion, played the first four years of his career there, then made the transition to Memphis. Been a full-time running back now, but kind of feels like one of those, those long line of Memphis Tigers that had that pass game production yeah. from the running back spot to Kenneth Gainwell, is going back to Antonio Gibson, D'Angelo Williams even, Tony Pollard right here in Dallas at the Darryl Cowboys. Henderson. I mean, they've, they've had a ton yeah. that have made their way to the league. The thing about uh, what's really impressive about Watson, he did it coming from a smaller school, has a ton of success at Memphis. So you see him take the step up, but the game wasn't too big for him. And then today, you watch him throughout the practice week. The game hasn't been too big for him. He's going to have a chance to kind of carve out a goal in the league. Yeah, led the team in rushing with over 1,100 yards, but also contributed 53 receptions. So you can see he's got that versatility for an NFL offense. Slovis under center. Ready for that, weren't they? Third and short. And Richard Jubunor, Jubunor comes up with the stop as uh, they're going to force a fourth down. It looks like we're going to get a field goal opportunity from Arkansas's Cam Little. That's a serious leg. Hit a 56 yarder in practice on Monday, and now it's going to get a shot from 48. So let's see what Cam Little can do with the operation. Snap from Marco Ortiz. Hold for Ryan Rico. Kick is up and good. And Cam Little has his second field goal of the game as we send it down to Jane Slater. Sixteen-year-old Libby Lambert, a highlight of the week for me. Born with a condition affecting her joint, she was initially told the most basic of tasks would be a struggle. But thanks to Shrines Hospital, she says she's had no limitations after nine surgeries. She now has her sights set on tackling another goal, rolling up plays as a coach in the NFL. She already does it now. No one has asked her yet, but she is currently a manager for her high school football team. And seeing someone like Titans defensive coach Lori Loke is here, Coaching will surely, surely show her, like her recovery, anything is possible. This was Lori making a point to catch up with her on the sidelines pregame. Those are some of the Tennessee Titans plays. She said, look, these are defensive plays, but I want to walk you through this. She wanted to encourage her to follow her dreams, made sure she walked away with a backpack, those plays, and some markers to mark up the future. Love those stories, Jane, and love that you got a chance to spend some time with her as well. How about that levels concept she was drawing up? Yes, there? yes. A little match concept, got people coming in. You know what I'm saying? It's man to man, got to pick them off. All right, East Team really getting down to it here. 15 point deficit is Austin Reed from Western Kentucky back in. This is his time to shine. You know, just get out there, let it rip as he tried to get to Casey Washington, wide receiver out of Illinois. A little bit off target. 242 to go in this game and look, you know, we talk about you need to up the tempo, get down the field. They got to get this third down here, Bucky. Yeah, really important. They got to get a third down. They got to give themselves a chance. See if we can make a play. All right, Austin Reed in the gun. Third down. He's going to get some pressure and going to go down. And there it's Grayson Murphy for yeah, the second. second time, Bucky. Second one for the of the day. Um, 
the coaches have, defense coaches they have just talked about how these guys had a knack and they played in a system at UCLA. They kind of let them go. Here we just see them attack, just physical, just overwhelms them at the point of attack. Does a great job of just finishing the down. There they are, twin brothers, both on the field at the same time, and that is super cool. They actually started their collegiate career together at North Texas and then transferred together to UCLA, and they've got 42 and a half collegiate sacks between them. Of course, their collegiate career is not the only places they've played together. Yeah. And from Dallas, Texas, right here. Double trouble right there. Hometown kids, home state kids getting a chance to make an impact here in Frisco, Texas. Pretty darn cool. And I'll tell you what, Grayson Murphy, man, with that kind of sack production, you always say, from your time with the Ravens, every time, you know, being around Ozzy. Yeah, I mean, like, anytime guys have proven consistent sack production, they find a way to get it done. Pressure leads to an incompletion. Ball goes back on the other side. And there you go, fourth down, and we're going to have a turnover on downs. West team defense staying tough for more on the Murphy twins. We send it back down to Jane Slater. And on those Murphy twins, truly identical. Their coach here this week also coached up the McCourty brothers while he was at Rutgers. He said he thought those were the most identical players he'd ever coached. He said this one even more so. The only way to tell them apart, guys, remember this. Grayson has the S in his name. He also has a scar on his face, a tiny one. I can't see it in this <laughs> photo we're showing, but I'll believe you, Jane. Yeah, it's been fun to watch those guys compete, fun to watch the Yaki twins compete. Big time sack production from those two Absolutely. on this night as John Rice Plumley back in the game here for the West. Going to hand it off. Minimal gain for Blake Whitson. No gain, in fact. Well, there's Bob Stoops, proud father, yeah. watching his son Drake. Have a nice night. Super cool, dude. You know, growing up a Sooner fan, you know, been around the program yes. the whole time with your dad and have a chance to contribute for that program in, in such a way. And then to make a name for yourself on a big stage like this and a big moment in the draft process. It's like Jackson Mitchell is down linebacker out of UConn. Defensive coordinator David Borgonzi really thought impressed this week. Best linebacker of the bunch on that squad. Yeah, he did a really good job all week. Led his team with 113 tackles this last year, playing for Jim Mora Jr. there at UConn. Staff out there to take a look at him, and obviously with two minutes and three seconds to go, we certainly hope he's going to be able to get out of here with a minimal ailment. At 32 tackles for loss and tackles for no gain since that 2020 season when he entered UConn. That's top 10 in FBS over that time period. Guy with major production. Major production, sack production really, really matters. Uh, everyone is looking for someone that can produce those splash plays, yep. sacks, tackles for loss, turnovers. He's been able to do that throughout his career, so that's why he's going to get plenty of love. Awesome to see Jackson Mitchell able to get up under his own power and walk off right next to his head coach, Richard Hightower. All right, 10 days away from Super Bowl 58. Nobody gets you closer than NFL Network. Over 70 hours of live coverage all week long. NFL Network, your home for everything Super Bowl 58. I'll see you for a number of Super Bowl Live episodes next week as we put the 49ers and Chiefs back into the spotlight on a Super Bowl stage. Thinking back to that 2019 game. Mm -hmm. Such a good one. Came in, coming down to the very end. First ring for Patrick Mahomes and company. And that is the two-minute warning. West team offense trying to run some clock and sneak out of here with a 26-11 victory. It's been an excellent night as we get a forecast of what to expect from some of these players on the next level here at Frisco, Texas.
Boy, I've had some legends play in this game and win the MVP, like Dandy Don Meredith. Make a Cowboys fans here in Texas smile. John Elway, right to Granada, right there, 1983. Yeah. MVP Jimmy Garoppolo. Las Vegas Raiders 2014 Shrine Bowl MVP. Could Talia Tungavailoa be the next in line to receive the prestigious hardware, the 99th East West Shrine Bowl? Leah, 9 of 14, 142 yards through the air, also added that touchdown on the ground. And but it was coming juice. out of the wire. Yeah, it was just juice, though. Like, yeah. beyond the numbers, he really juiced up the squad when he came in. You saw the energy change. Love seeing all three South Dakota State Jackrabbit targets in the game at the same oh, time as Blake Watson makes one miss, makes the. Oh! Makes the last line of defense what? miss and then shows what some class. What are we doing? In an all-star game. Oh, I appreciate the football awareness. But I'm gonna tell you, Red, we're putting that one in the paint. We're putting that one in the paint. I'm trying to go in the Hall of Famer if I'm in the East West Shrine game. He has 93 scrimmage yards before that. That would put him over 100 oh, scrimmage baby. yards with a touchdown. I mean, oh hey, God. appreciate Blake Watson's awareness. Wow. Sure. Oh, we just had a shower for Mike Kafka. Gatorade shower on the sideline for the West team head coach now taking some knees with Blake Watson sitting in victory formation after that slide down. Slide down. Look, look, I appreciate it. Look, sportsman, sportsman like if you talk about winning the game management, he's going to have to learn that skill, so I appreciate it. But selfishly, I would want to punch that one in. I'm oh, trying 100%. to get a horrible. I'm trying to get a horrible. Ah, he could have made a late pitch for MVP. Yeah. We were just talking about it. 100 scrimmage yards. Oh, man. Card. Nice play. Though. Good for you, Blake Watson. Not about the trophy. It's about the team. It is about, about the, the team. team. Keaton Slovis giving his head coach Mike Kafka a hug. Hey, here's Blake Watson's day, Buck. The good one. Uh, so we're talking about the importance of being able to catch the ball on the backfield. He showed the other day uh, six receptions, caught it well, ran it well. Uh, just a nice showcase event for him. Uh, he should feel he should feel good about the tape that he put up today. You mentioned he was just a couple of yards shy of 100 plus scrimmage yards. He had, that was what he did for yeah. Memphis this year. Nine of 13 games saw him go over 100 from scrimmage. Although it won't be tonight as the clock ticks down with the East team out of timeouts. And the West team up 26 to 11. Hugs and handshakes over there on that west sideline as John Rice Plumley takes what is likely to be the final knee and the finishing touches on a fantastic game for the West team. Head coach Mike Kaska, who then gives a handshake to Blake Watson, his quarterback John Rice Plumley. Nice hug between the two head coaches here, Kafka and Hightower, who both did a phenomenal job yes. you know, this week with their command, their inspiration to these teams and their ability to connect with the players. Yeah, I really like what both guys did. I, I think Hightower did a great job of really connecting with the players. The organization from both guys, Kafka and Hightower, was impressive. As these guys look to move and elevate and get promoted, I think there's a lot of positive feedback that will come back from the way that they handle their business at this event. Boy, there's Talia Tungabailoa hanging out with his Maryland teammate. Tarheep still wasn't able to play in the game, but also had a really good practice week. But for Leah, boy, he came in, and he got a fire into this West offense. Yeah, lit fire. It, it, the energy right away dropped an explosive uh, to really change the field. And then here, scrambling to put this ball in, followed it up with a, an electric two-point conversion. Got this team up and going. Even though Frank Gore put the first points on the huh. board, Leah certainly turned it up a notch when he entered the game. Leah had the juice, the energy giver, as his coaches called him, and there was no shortage of it. That is for sure from that West team and the, I mean, the East team. Phenomenal job, but you know, tempted that comeback, got it started. You know, a little bit with the turnover on downs. They got into the end zone on the punt return from Anthony Gould. Thought they might make a real game of this. Just unable to put the finishing touches on what would have been a miraculous comeback.
It's so much fun watching these players shine, some of those one-on-one -on -one moments yes. during the practice week. And then, you know, for players like Frank Gore, who had the opportunity to then take what they did in the practice week and transition it under the bright lights of game time. Let's take a and look you, at what Frank Gore did uh, here on this night. Yeah, that's one of the things that you like about Frank Gore. He was able to take what he did on the practice field and put it to play in the game early in the game. You saw him explode on a big touchdown run. One of the things that you question, his home run speed, where well, he answers some of that with that big run. Then it's just the physicality and the toughness that he can't just play. This is a nice player, big time player. We knew he had the genes, the bloodlines, but the way that he played, you feel better about his prospects as an NFL uh, player. He got out the gate in a hurry on that possession with the 49 yard touchdown run that opened the scoring for the West squad who did not look back. Scoring on their first three possessions, touchdown, two touchdowns and a field goal. As we get set for the MVP presentation, you get a look at Anthony Gould. One of the most exciting plays of the night. You love making the first guy miss, mm -hmm. but let's take a look at the skills and the moves from Gould. Yeah, the Cardinals perfectly attacked it. The spin move there, the wherewithal to understand where everyone is, keep his feet, and then go score. It's one thing to deliver explosive punt returns. It's another thing to take it all the way back to the house. Uh, Please believe that special team coaches around the league are making little notes. Uh, my man put one in the paint in an all-star game. It'll help him status going forward. Oh, no doubt. And obviously you want to get the team win, but that was an individual dub right there for Anthony Gould from Oregon State. Get a picture with his fellow wide receivers. And their wide receiver coach, Brian Bratton, right there. Two seasons on the Colts staff as an offensive quality control assistant. You know, we've been talking a lot about offense, but defensive players had some phenomenal moments here, too. Aaron Casey led his squad in tackles. Linebacker from Indiana. And how about Grayson Murphy with the pass rush? Yeah, had a couple nice plays, a couple nice sacks, and you saw when they needed him to make a play, he was able to finish it off. This was powerful, finished it, takes him down. That is what you're looking for from these pass rushers. Who has the potential to end up being a closer at the National Football League? No question. You put that on tape in a game like this, best on best type of scenario, and that, that's the sort of stuff that, that carries over. And you talk about, you know, if you can find a way to get to the quarterback at any level, you could certainly get there at the next level. And without further ado, we get a chance to find out who will take home the hardware with Jane Slater. Jane, take it away. Well, what an incredible week that it's been out here in Frisco. Congratulations to the West team winning this one 26 to 11. Let's get to our game's MVPs. Starting with our offensive MVP, I've got Ed Stoles here, Chairman, Board of Directors for Shriners Children, to present the offensive MVP to Frank Gore Jr. Yo, Frank. All right, now, Frank, real quick, I want to ask you, after that initial drive, you got the touchdown. I went looking for your dad, Frank Gore Sr. He wasn't even able to watch it. He was held up outside, but I did see him coaching you on the sidelines. What was some of the feedback he gave you? Uh, just always stay vertical and just things like that. Uh, little tips that's going to help me. How much did tonight's showcase help you as you move forward with some of your NFL draft dreams? Next up, you've got the invitation to the Combine. Uh, it helped a lot um, being able to play with these great guys, great talent. Um, it helped a lot. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity and just blessed. Great getting to know you this week. Thank you. All right, let's move on to our defensive MVP, Jarius Monroe, the quarterback who had the interception in this one out of Tulane. To present your trophy for this one, we've got Matt Sturgeson, the chairman of the East-West Shrine Bowl. Jarius, what did you take away from this experience this week? Man, I just met so many great guys. You hear them yelling my name. Um, just great guys, man. And, you know, coming from where I come from and, you know, being a small school guy, it's kind of hard to get over that step. But, you know, I'm ready to uh, be able to showcase my talents in front of them. What were you seeing on that interception? Um, I knew the play before. We were in cover three, and he was kind of staring down his reads. Great quarterback over there, obviously. But, uh, I noticed he was doing that, maybe, you know, not having chemistry with those guys. And uh, that next play, I was like, okay, I'm going to fake like I'm playing cover three again. And then I'm going to come down, you know, hinge and make a play like Coach Garcia has been teaching us. Uh, 
great coach. You know, we've had a great coaching staff, and they've just taught us the right ways to do things. So I was sinking with wit, wit and not depth, what they've been teaching us, and uh, I was able to make a play. Well, that's what you, you look for, coachable. Congratulations on a great week. Now let's get your coach into this one. West coach Mike Kafka, tell me how you feel after a win like this with this team, coach. Listen, I'm just so happy for the players, for the coaches. They put a great week of work together, and then to see them come out here and compete was just awesome. You were an MVP in this one back in 2010. How different was it to be on the sidelines? Um, I could still feel the same energy. I mean, it was, it was great back then, even better now. Coach, you were part of some of these coaching interviews. It didn't happen this round, but what did this experience help you moving forward? Yeah, great. It just gives you a lot of confidence. And, you know, when you're around a great group of guys like this, um, you know, special things happen. This was a really fun week. Look forward to covering you as a head coach in this league soon, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys? Jay, thanks very much. Uh, Bucky Brooks, boy, listening to Jarius Monroe, you want to talk about taking coaching and putting it on the field? That was incredible. Yeah, I love that. In the interview, you, you want to hear guys give that kind of detail when it comes to what they were asked to do in coverage, the whys behind the plays that they made. Uh, gave you a little insight into his football IQ. Like that. And overall here, Bucky, you know, I think the, the overriding theme is that these players have made an impression. Right? Whether they're on the winning team or, or the team that didn't get it done, they've got a lot to look forward to as the draft process continues. Yeah, a lot to look forward to. This is the last time we'll see these guys in pads. Now it's time to get ready for workouts, combine, and those things. But the lasting impression that several of these guys made uh, tonight will help them in evaluations going forward. No question. Big plays all over the place. Offense, defense, through the air, on the ground. And we were so honored to be a part of it here at the 99th annual East-West Shrine Bowl for Frisco, Texas. But tell the West team, get the dub 26 to 11. For Bucky Brooks, Jane Slater, and our entire crew, I'm Red Lewis. Thanks so much for being with us from Frisco, Texas. See you next year.